everyone act natural. <laughs> Welcome, it's the 200th episode of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm your fearless hostess, Patricia Steer, and I've got a cast of characters. Oh, I mean YouTube content providers and friends here with me. And there will be who you see now and who you'll be meeting in a moment if you don't know them already. And then other people will be rotating in and out. So hopefully this will go smoothly. It's not going to go smoothly. Oh, and Mark and I are going to have a cocktail to celebrate the 200th anniversary. So I've got a big old bottle of vegan right. vodka. <laughs> so that and some uh, organic uh, pink grapefruit juice. Probably I should have started drinking before the show. Mark, you have a beverage. Uh, mine is lemonade and grain alcohol. Thank you. Grain alcohol your neighbor made? I remember that. <laughs> no, no he, he makes fortified wine, which may or may not be hallucinogenic. Aha, uh -huh. I don't even know what grain alcohol is. It sounds like something you'd clean wood furniture. No, no, it's it's moonshine. It's basically oh. government sanctioned moonshine. Why do you have that? Because <laughs> uh, it's part of my survival gear, which is it's uh, 200 proof alcohol. You can buy it in, I, it's, I know it's illegal in like 10 states, but it's called Everclear. Look it up. Older people will definitely know what it is. Uh, you, you cannot drink it. Well, you're not supposed to drink it without mixer. Anyway. But it's not about me, it's about you. And congratulations, by the way, on your 200th episode. I'm looking at a dark screen. I do not know why. Really? Uh, but I would like to be the first one to say that because you deserve it. 200 episodes. Who knew it would go by so fast? Uh, does everyone else see everyone else's screen? Any dark screen for me, anyone reporting? My no, I see you now. You're good. Well, well um, I'm going to just let each of you introduce yourselves. And I know a few of you have to get going. So we're going to start just on my screen anyway, at the very left, which is D-I-T-R-H. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Hello, Patricia. And you've got to go. You're on a somewhat of a time constraint. I am. I was scheduled for a 6 o'clock show at 6.49. Nothing uh -oh. ever changes. <laughs> no, this was supposed to start at 6.30 this time. Okay. Um, oh, we just got a beautiful flash of, uh, of Carly Sunshine, but you're third in the list, so just a moment. <laughs> We've got Tim Osman with the Z, otherwise known as Infinite Plains Society. And uh, hey, thanks for being here. I know you're also on a time constraint, correct? That's right, and thanks for having me on, and congratulations on your 200th episode. And I wasn't aware there were any other Tim Osmonds, but yeah, wow. Tim Osman with a Z, you can <laughs> uh, search that. And uh, yeah, I have to go in about 15, but I wanted to just chime in for a minute and yeah, I want you know, to talk about clarify my view on the rocket because yeah, that's kind I of. I want to introduce everybody and then do to do talk about the rocket. That's the, the thing that this group will talk about, plus just a few pleasantries. Uh, Carly Sunshine, hello. And as I said, you look really nice, and I like that hat 1920s thing that you're wearing. It's pretty. Well, thank you. Uh, as always, it's an honor to be on, and I am <laughs> sipping on a little bit of white wine, nice. congratulating you for 200 <laughs> episodes. Um, and this is this is my. I was out in the wind off and on today, covering up my hair headband. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I love it. Thank you. Up next is um, not a globe head, but an AE head uh, or dome head. It's Mark Sargent. Hello. Hey. We've already greeted you. Yeah, I was about to say, you don't need to talk to me. <laughs> Move on to other people. I'm not a All right. Um, we have Martin Leakey here, Flat Earth British. Hey. Martin. Hey, Patricia. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I know. We, we just got a flash of Alex Aquarius, and we'll get to him in a moment. But first off, in the the way that I've got everybody ordered on my screen, probably no one else's screen, it's uh, Nathan Oakley. Hey. Hello, congratulations. Thank you for Thank having you. me here. Up next, you may not know them, but you should, John and Jen. They have a new channel called Flat Earth Vegans. And tell everyone uh, very quickly about your other channel, which is more of sort of a DIY channel. Okay. Uh, uh, our Whole Life Potential is our other channel, and we do cooking videos, vegan recipes. Um, and uh, then Flat Earth Vegans, we're just going to talk about flat earth veganism, non-toxic products, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, just want to congratulate you on your 200th uh, show. And you two are what I've said to you before when we were uh, at the uh, conference in Raleigh, your couple's goals for me. You both are on the same page when it comes to shape of the earth and all sorts of alternative things and veganism. And yes. yeah, you both are lucky to have found each other. Anybody who's got a mate who's into what they're into, you know, here's a cheers and a toast to you. Uh, you. Up next, we've got Zoe, Zoe Scribner of the channel Be Here in Love. Thank you for coming on, Zoe. Always a I'm always a pleasure. 
And your mic is muted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a rookie mistake. No. <laughs> you hate to see it. I just wanted to come in and say congratulations, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Noe does a lot of different accents, including men, but she is a woman. You don't need to transvest. So <laughs> Uh, we have just been joined by Alex Aquarius, who came in as we were speaking. So, Alex, thank you for coming on. Houston resident as well. Have to throw that in. How are you? Oh, oh, good, because it cut out sound-wise a little bit. Um, make sure you've muted anything or killed anything like Skype or anything dragging your bandwidth down. Okay, let's talk while Alex gets that set, let's talk about the uh, Mad Mike rocket launch coming up on Saturday and the way the media is portraying it as flat earthers are going to prove the earth is flat by being shot up in a rocket when that's not necessarily true. And there's a lot of people talking about it and a little bit of controversy surrounding it. I think we should uh, ask uh, the man himself, Tim Osman with a Z, formerly known as IPS, who really got the ball or rocket rolling on this. What's, what's the truth behind all of this, for those who don't know? Okay, the truth for all of this is that the rocket is not, and it was never intended to go high enough to prove anything. And we all know that even if you went up 70 miles or something, you're not even going to have a perceptible curve. Uh, all we're doing with the rocket, with research flat earth on the side, is doing what we did with all the billboards. And the billboard is basically something to get people's attention, to get them talking. And so this is our most effective billboard yet. And that's all it is at the moment. It hasn't even moved yet. And if you look at the attention, we got the top newspapers, Popular Mechanics, USA Today, uh, CBS, NPR. It keeps blowing up. And so as far as I'm concerned, this is just there to get people talking. And what Mike's thinking is that if enough people are interested in this project, then they'll invest into his bigger project. But as far as the actual goals of the event, to me, it's just to get people talking and bring more minds into the debate, into the discussion. And uh, for those who are unaware of how he managed to get Research Flat Earth on the rocket, can you give us the brief information on that? Yes. Uh, he was trying to fund the rocket, which I believe costed him about $20,000, including the rocket launching pad, which is made out of a trailer, a mobile trailer. But he made the thing from scratch. But part of raising the money was looking for sponsors. And so he saw the Research Flat Earth billboard that we put up, which was actually Ditra's idea. He saw Carly Sunshine's YouTube video where she drove out for like three hours to go see the billboard. And then he was watching that video and he saw on my live stream, he called in. And that particular live stream is actually linked on NPR's and Washington Post site. So that video, that conversation, um, it's getting a good you know, thousand hits plus per hour, and it contains a lot of ideas that I think the media is finding challenging. And so what I'm seeing right now, like in the Washington Post, is they're actually talking about how we are suggesting that Elon Musk is faking rockets with blimps, if not just CGI. And so it, it's ugly. The media is ugly. That's what they do is they misrepresent everything. But I think overall... Uh, Flat Earth is going to get a lot of conversations going and that all the best we can do is clarify misconceptions as fast as we can. We are using the media. We don't need the media, but we're using them as a tool as we use other things that the powers that should not be have gifted us with and also put in our place, put in place for us so that they can monitor us like Google, like Facebook, like Twitter, like all of these other things. Um, of course, YouTube. Um, we're using their tools to get information out there just to make people look and get curious. So nothing wrong with that. Now, um, D-I-T-R-H, you've got some thoughts on that. And you put out a video today that I've shared on my Twitter. And it's all over the place, getting lots of people thinking, lots of people commenting. What's your take on this? My take on it is um, I just wanted to get it out on the record that we, nobody in the flat earth community thinks that this rocket is going to prove anything that the sign, the research flat earth was purely a billboard put on the side of a rocket for a cost. You know, we, uh, IPS, uh, Tim got, uh, some fundraising together. Um, I'm not, I forget, I think it was a GoFundMe, got a few bucks together for him and, and we got it. And so sure the publicity is out there. So the argument that people are going to have is, you know, is all publicity, good publicity, um, the answer to that is kind of yes and no. The, the, I've been thinking about it all day. And if you think about it, heliocentrists think flat earth is the most ridiculous, stupid thing on the planet already. 
So, you know, with all of this flatter stuff popping up in the news, popping up on their YouTube feeds, seeing it on Facebook, seeing it everywhere, they're going to see it again and again, and they're going to start looking just from the advertising alone. You know, from the Washington Post, I've had a dozen friends that have never mentioned Flat Earth uh, send it to me. They're now asking questions about Flat Earth. Is that a good thing? I say yes. Um, I, I see them actually converting over soon. But if he go, even if he doesn't get hurt, but if he gets hurt or worse, they're going to take this and just tie it to Flat Earthers saying, you know, these dumb people, you know, you saw my video, I put some uh, quotes from Bill Nye and, uh, and, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, it won't be far off from that. And, uh, and they will ridicule, ridicule us. And that's kind of, I just want the record to be set um, beforehand. So yeah, I understand right. what you're saying. And I received a uh, text message from my friend who's also an eye doctor today said, the flat it's you know the thing that's going around even mainstream people are seeing it flat earther attempts to prove blah 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 and it was at the mad mike video um and um you know news article actually and it was pretty surprising he knows i'm a flat earther he doesn't disbelieve in it but it's not something he's really pursued but he saw that found it and sent it to me and i have a, several other emails that i haven't looked at yet but i can tell from the subject line it's people that i know that are out there that i don't really uh know through flat earth that have seen this but know i'm a flat earther personal friends so hey i found out after i made the video that mad mike is a flat earther because i wrote in the video that he's not i thought he just saw this um so that that's incorrect but that's really not anything relevant in the in the in the video it doesn't matter whether he is or he isn't um so i'm just i'll just correct that yeah well we're going to have to do a lot of as i did with my eye doctor friend a little bit of correcting that no we're not out to prove that the earth is flat with this etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's really all we need to do but for all those people that we don't have the ability to reach out and touch who aren't going to be emailing or calling us uh they will come to their own conclusions remember we ourselves found a tiny bit of information one day on YouTube or wherever. And then we did our own research and wound up where we are today. So sometimes you look around and you think everybody is um, kind of um, idiotic. I mean, I'm not talking about people in flat earth. I'm talking about just people who think, oh, it's a globe or gravity. Um, but you have to give everyone credit. We were able to figure out it out and we were people who believed we lived on a globe. So fingers crossed that nothing bad happens to him. I mean, that's what we don't want to happen. May I, may I comment? Yes, I wanted you to comment, Carly. Okay. Um, and, I, and, and I say this respectfully. Now that we're learning what we're learning right now during this Hangout and we're sharing with each other, um, and I knew this from the beginning that Mad Mike was a flat earther long before, you know, he decided that he wanted to try to uh, make this rocket into a flying billboard. Um, so in my mind, I see him as a flat earth researcher and to top that off, he's a rocket scientist. You know, I feel like I don't want us to go out there and burn bridges. We want people like him on our side and we want to be able to support people like Mad Mike. And furthermore, I just want to kind of put out the challenge to all of us. Right now, we can go one of two ways. You know, we can be embarrassed by this and maybe think that it's not a good thing, or we can start spreading the actual truth about what Mad Mike is doing and we can let all the other flat earthers know that originally he was never doing this to prove curvature, disprove curvature. He wasn't trying to get up, you know, higher than any of these um, weather balloons or high altitude balloons. He was doing this originally to launch a rocket that was man-made, steam powered over a mile and beat a world record. It just so happens he's a flat earther and he decided he wanted to make it into a giant flying billboard so i'm just putting the challenge out to all of us now that we are getting all this attention why not make it right and everyone do their part and share the truth of the situation and get behind him and support him you know i don't want to see him get hurt either but he has he's sacrificing this for the community yeah well we all will keep our fingers crossed and we'll uh, keep our eyes to the sky on saturday in amboy uh california Tim? Yes. And um, yeah, I'm going to be streaming from Amboy. I'm actually driving out there Friday. I'm going to be there to cover it, talk to Mike before and hopefully after. And so you can find my live stream at flatearthnetwork.com. 
uh, probably doing it from Twitch and YouTube and a few others. I'm multicasting it, um, my interaction. But he's going to have his own um, stream up close. I don't know how they're going to do it. I think they have a drone as well. But I'll be there on Saturday. So thanks for having me on, and congratulations on 200 episodes. Thank you so That's much. Right. And I do want to ask you, and I think everybody wonders, should we call you Tim Osman with a Z? Or should we call you IPS or Infinite Plane Society or Flat Earth Network? I mean, what what do you prefer? I think he wants oh, to be I called just, Rocket Man. <laughs> no, I just go by Tim, honestly. But, you know, Infinite Plane Society, the channel's still there, but, you know, got mm -hmm. kind of silenced. The Flat Earth Network is kind of the site where I broadcast from, but I'm not the the site. It's, it's actually just sort of more generic. But um, most people say Tim, but IPS is fine. It's just that if you search IPS, you find a bunch of bad stuff about me. So it's like, let's just go with Tim. Well, with the uh, pyramid and all seeing eye, I mean, that's probably going to continue, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, so. I, I did that. I did that specifically for the church ladies. All right, you guys have a great night. Goodbye. Oh. Thank you for coming on. David, do you have to split as well? Or should I kick you off? Because that's one of the things I've known to do. <laughs> I can hang out for a few minutes. I'll, I'll listen. I, should I just boot you now? <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> well, I do want to have a toast since I've got my vodka and pink grapefruit juice ready with anyone who has a beverage, including Mark Sargent. It's a toast to uh, not just 200 episodes of my show. I mean, there's people who've done way more than that. Just to Flat Earth and those who are questioning the globe. Here's to you. Thanks for your open mind and for most of you anyway, your open heart. Long live flat earth. <laughs> Ooh, I think I made that a little strong. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what are you drinking? Probably water, right? It's a bush light. No. It's what? Bush light. Bush beer light? Bush light, yes. Ah. Yeah, here in Texas. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, Robbie D has joined us now. Hello, Mr. FEIC 2017 conference organizer. How are you? Doing good. Congratulations on 200 episodes. It's a big milestone for sure, Patricia. Have you? Oh, look at the beautiful pictures of you and your wife behind you. Nice. They were Whenever. done in New Zealand. Ah, yes. I've seen those pictures on your Facebook. Yeah. Um, when you got married and you've made a new announcement that uh, your wife who was pregnant at the conference still is pregnant is uh, going to have you didn't know the sex of the child so it's going to be a boy so you'll have a boy and girl it is and I'm very excited because I'm the last in the family tree so for me having a boy is really exciting nice to have both mm-hmm absolutely wonderful do you have a name picked out no not yet well, your daughter is named Sophia, and you told so many people that I don't feel like I'm giving anything away. And all I could think about was NASA and Sophia, <laughs> Sophia plane they've got. <laughs> so, funny. Maybe you'll need to come up with some kind of a name that's a play on that, but still a regular name. I can't think of anything right now, but we'll have to work on it. Yeah, we'll kind of figure out a name as we go forward, that's for sure. But it's nice to finally get back and relax after FEIC. What a... <laughs> What an event it was. It was incredible meeting all of you, um, all people in the chat like uh, Mark and Carly and uh, I think the vegan, Flatter Vegan. Yep, they are. There. are. And uh, yep. yeah, it was it was amazing to, to meet all of you and uh, just what a what an amazing event. So it was uh, very exciting for me, but definitely getting well-deserved re rest. I think I slept 16 hours the entire week I was there. So it was you nice to- You are super tall and thin and you are full of energy, the kind of energy that gives you that ability to multitask. And you, of course, had come up with the idea to do this conference, but also are the perfect person to have done it because of that ability. You're like four people in one mm -hmm. and you were always moving around, always making sure everything was okay. And um, really, I, there's no way I, I know myself, there's no way I could do that unless I had like a bunch of other people who were versions of me and then you had some great people helping you too so yeah absolutely and it was important for me to at least try to meet everyone there at least once uh so i kind of went out of my way to make sure that i uh, was able to be accessible and, and meet as many people as i could and it was very enjoyable having dinner with you patricia when uh, you first got there uh, with my wife and, and daughter that was a really enjoyable evening and just getting to know everyone it was really special so i'm i'm excited for uh, Denver as I kind of prepare for that and talking with Gary today we're getting everything ready for the UK one so it would be nice to work with him and uh, I'll be attending UK's in, in April so I'm excited about that as well 
And I know Mark Sargent is going, and I know Martin Liedke is going, and I'm going to most likely 99% go, although I'm not a speaker, just go to, to enjoy it. And Gary John's going to pop in a little bit later on, too. So um, thank you for coming on. And just once again, congratulations on pulling off a really great event. And then, you know, there are always the naysayers, as Tim Osmond says, calls them naysayers, people who will uh, always try to find fault and pick fault at something. And we all can agree no matter what we've ever pulled off in life, nothing ever goes perfectly, nothing. No one's wedding goes perfectly. No one's graduation goes perfectly. You can barely cook a meal and have it go perfectly. You can't take a sure. trip in your car to the grocery store with remembering everything. That's life. But we learn from what wasn't so good and then we capitalize on what was good and then we continue. I say we, I just mean you and I mean anybody who does anything, mm -hmm. make something bigger and better next time. Yeah, I just want to assure, I want to assure everyone out there that you know are looking at skeptical or didn't maybe like certain directions that I'm definitely taking in all the feedback and uh, will adjust accordingly. But uh, I'm definitely looking for Denver to make sure that there's things put in place that uh, make sure that uh, everyone is happy. I think for most people that were there, they were extremely happy with the event and I can only improve. So I'm appreciative of the feedback I'm getting and I just want to make it uh, more enjoyable and more of a spectacular event uh, going forward. So I'm excited uh, and I'm thankful for all of your support. And uh, like I said, for me, making it real was really important. And it was so important for the community, but also the presenters uh, being able to meet all at the same time together. For me, it was uh, important for it to go to the next level that we needed to make it real. And I think that's what's happening. And I think we're seeing that even with the media attention. Uh, I think there's been a transformation. And sure, there'll always be people that will attack it, come at it. Uh, but most times, these are the people that didn't even go. So yeah. yes, I, I have yet to hear from someone that went that thought it was a bloody waste of time. It was a bloody waste of money. Um, most people that went, you know, had the time of their life. And uh, to me, it's a really enjoyable thing to be able to bring that to people. And I want to be able to do that on a larger scale. And uh, I'm sure there'll always be people that will object and, and have their uh, ideas. And they're free to create their own event if they think they can do it better. And I'll be one to support it, just like I'm supporting Gary. Uh, heard that Australia is happening. I'm all about this. I'm all about the big picture, and I want to work with others. So there's room for a lot of people to do a lot of different type of events. And uh, I'm just going to continue on listening to the feedback of the community and what I think is good going forward. And I think that uh, people are going to be really pleased with what they see, especially in next year in, in Denver. I like your attitude where you said that you realized that some things didn't go exactly the way that you had hoped they went and some things maybe can be tweaked and you take responsibility as a creator of the event for that and have listened to people's feedback and are adjusting accordingly. A lot of people put something together and they're like, well, if you don't like it, you can lump it. And I like how you're not being that way. And I'm talking more specifically when it comes to the religious angle. A lot of people had objections with that. Going forward, I'm going to make sure that there's a choice. So if there is something that's more religious-based, maybe talking about flat earth and the Bible, then there'll be an optional session you can go to that's based on science. So that's what I'm saying is I'll provide a lot more choices for people that they don't feel forced into something that maybe they don't want to be part of. Um, so I think that would, was probably one of the biggest objections I heard, the fact that uh, there was too much religion or they didn't want you know religion being part of it. Well, that's going to all be part of it because that's a big part of the community but i do understand that's not everyone's cup of tea so i'll provide the options and have multi you know seminars going on so definitely you know in the future you'll definitely have a choice if you don't like one you'll be able to go to another and i think that will appease a lot of people that had objections as far as maybe a stronger religious slant uh, i've been on, i've gone on the record before saying it's not a religious conference it's flat earth and i want to make sure that it stays that way but again the bible will always have a big part to play in flat earth as we're seeing in the community but I just want to make sure that if people don't want to sit in on a Bible session on Flat Earth, they'll be able to go to a very scientific one with Iru Landucci, or they can go to something else that maybe they're going to be more interested in. And going forward, I'm going to be able to open up workshops and different type of sessions to work with uh, presenters that want to go more on an intimate I'm all looking at ways to really improve on it, make it a lot more close and intimate for people, but also giving them choice that they can go to something that they really want to go to. And I also heard a couple of people saying that some of the video clips that had played uh, when certain people won Flatty Awards weren't um, coordinated with what they actually did. And those are little issues that will we'll all get ironed out. And I do not like the fact that some people's feelings were hurt over that. And if the Flatty Awards are even decided that we're going to do it again next year, we'll, it'll be much more cohesive. And uh, apologies, sure. uh, yeah. even if I wasn't responsible for that, but apologies no. to anybody who felt that a video clip wasn't portraying them in the best yeah, way. Yeah, and that was 
and that was an area where I actually didn't oversee at the end, and I will make sure that I oversee every one of those clips. Uh, it was obviously the wrong clips were presented, but I think the, the right uh, focus in giving back to the community. For me, I think it's a very important component of FEIC because there's a lot of people that are doing extraordinary work out there and I want them to be recognized. I want them to, you know, always have, uh, you know, a shot at that and maybe they'll work harder on things and they'll try. Uh, to me, it's it's a very important component. So I think a lot of people, even people that went into it that thought it was kind of cheesy, afterwards I asked them, I said, what did you think of it? And they said, actually, I thought it was pretty cool. And I think it's a lot of fun. So we'll only improve on that. We'll have other people that will have the opportunity uh, to win and it's not about winning the award. It's about recognizing certain people because there's extraordinary work being done in the community. And it's not just the big name channels that are doing the work. There's a lot of really great content, good music, you know, the arts, all these things. So I just want to make sure that they're recognized. And I think it's a very special and a fun time to end the conference each year. And I guess we'll, we'll decide. But for me, I think it's an important component and I definitely want to see it happen going forward. But we'll make sure that the video clips are presented in the best light for sure going forward. That was one area, like I said, I didn't uh, over oversee at the very end. Uh, I was very busy and I just uh, left it to someone to do and they had the right idea. They had the right uh, videos. They just didn't get the right parts of the videos. So we'll make sure that we get that cleaned up for next year. Yes. And, and, and nobody Patricia? feels they were portrayed in the wrong way. That, that wasn't done on purpose, although there is a person who believes it was and I cannot do anything to change that person's view, but that's fine because I did attempt and that's all that matters. Sure. Uh, Carly, yes. I'm just, I wanted to comment really quick on the conference and then I'm going to leave and let and leave room for someone else. Uh -huh. um, first of all, I just wanted to applaud you, Robbie, because I think you did an absolute fantastic job. This was my first Flat Earth meetup ever. <laughs> so I did it up good, you know, really good by going to the conference. Um, but I applaud you in the fact that even though this event was amazing, you've taken a lot of heat and you've taken a lot of criticism and you're using that to make you stronger and make the next conference even better. I love the fact that um, you're using the criticism to do things like, you know, giving people options next time. I just think that's so fair. And I hope that there's a lot of people listening to this, especially the ones that are out there, you know, all the naysayers. Um, but I just wanted to say I had a phenomenal time. I was so honored to be invited. And I also wanted to throw out there that it was so nice meeting Patricia and Mark and also John and Jennifer that are here on this panel because I just had an absolute blast with all of you and friendships will last forever. Yeah. So I'm going to go and say goodbye and let someone else hop in. And love Carly, all of you guys. Love everybody Carly, in chat. I decided wait, that you're going you. to be my unofficial wait, sister. Uh, who, just letting who's, you. That, who's that that was just talking? Wait. <laughs> Sorry. I, I <laughs> Thank we you for sisters. speaking, whoever, <laughs> whoever you were. <laughs> all right, Carly, thank you for coming on. And uh, Zoe Scribner, you. Uh, yeah, you have to go at the moment, but please do come back later. Um, definitely you don't need to go, but um, bye. No. <laughs> I don't so someone else can come on as well. All right, you're so kind. And but come back in later, most definitely. Bye. Oh, yeah. Bye. She has the most beautiful singing voice. <laughs> Um, now, Gary John is here. We were just speaking about you, Gary, before you joined about the conference that's coming up uh, in late April of 2018, which sounds like a long time away, but guess what? It's not. How's it going with the planning? It's, um, it's moving along. At, can you hear me okay? Pretty well, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, moving along at a pace. And as Robbie said, uh, we had a chat tonight. And uh, when you were saying about uh, you know, you're five and a half months away, it's like, Oh dear, <laughs> it's, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of work, and um, it's um, yeah. It's uh, now that the, uh, the USA event is over, it's uh, it brings it to the fore really. On um, that the UK one is next, and it's uh, coming around super quick. Yeah, so, I'm uh, excited about it, and I still haven't yeah. bought my ticket yet. I think you and I were messaging the other day, and you said a number of Americans had bought their tickets, and I need to be among yeah. the number. Yeah, I'm excited about that. It's nice because obviously we've got um, you know potential for um, people around the world to uh, to attend. But, um, you know, it'd be nice to see what the dynamics is uh, when it comes to the final, um, you know, the final uh, weeks leading up to it. Is there anything that you feel you need the community's help with in getting this thing together? Um, well, it's it's an interesting one actually. Um, one of the things that it's it's not exactly help. It's actually 
strange is that the fact that a lot of people are buying the, uh, the weekend tickets, but they don't seem to be taken up on the Friday. And I think what I've got to do, and I've done it over the last day, is I've changed the website around a bit where the actual Friday is the first thing on the actual ticket list. Also, the um, I've actually gone for uh, the early bird tickets actually now going to be extended to December because I wanted to give people three months from when it started to when the actual early bird finishes. Uh, but the actual the help is really uh, it's just nice to get feedback from people uh, with you know their comments, good or bad, to try and see how we can improve things because you know it's it's a first event for us. Obviously, we're learning from Robbie as well. But um, buy the ticket and turn up and <laughs> have, have fun. Really, that'd be, that'd be if, nice. if you want to help, buy the ticket. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What would somebody? Where would they need to go to do that? Um, obviously, the website is uh, www.flirtearthconventionuk.co.uk, and um, everything is on there. And anyone who buys a ticket will then receive an email from me with additional uh, information. And um, if they've got any queries, they can come to me direct. And they can write to me, and you know, if they've got any queries with the hotel or they want to know anything about the convention, and um, you know, they've got a route um, through the Facebook route and also through the website. For those who are unaware and haven't really looked at the website, who is going to be speaking? Okay, um, I have to take out. Well, I've I've, 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 sorry. Oh, okay, nothing. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, I may have to take out one name, um, but um, from the United States, uh, Mark Sargent, as we've already discussed tonight, or you've discussed, yeah. um, meant to be John the Morgyle, but I don't know. What's happening there and uh, I have actually sent him an email to ask him what's happened because what happened in the USA and um, I'm waiting for feedback and I can only go so long before I have to call it uh, quits on that one so um, he's potentially coming um, I, I say with my fingers crossed um, in the UK we have Darren Nesbitt we have Dave Marsh with Sean Connors uh, Martin Leakey who's been mentioned tonight uh, allegedly Dave, uh, somebody I'm really excited to work with again because I've seen him before. Uh, in America, sorry, in America, so again, in Holland we have Mike Kavanagh, everyone knows him through FE Core and his great work and we've also got uh, Martin uh, 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 Ludlow, you know, Ivan S. Ludlow and I'm also speaking as well but I have mentioned that before so that's going to be um, something a little bit different because uh, I haven't actually got any uh, major content but I am working on something that I'm looking for to share with people that is different to most things in Flat Earth. Very interesting. And anybody who's involved with Flat Earth doesn't have to have a channel or content to be involved in this. And you, although you don't have content per se, you're putting together a convention. And I think that's content. Like, I think it outweighs yeah, it many things. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, I mean, and obviously looking back, and obviously I've spoken to Didi, because um, she's now, I've, I've, I've changed things around a little bit. And she's oh, now, tell us who Didi is. She was at the uh, rally conference for those who don't yes, know. Yes, yeah. Uh, Didi, uh, very, uh, a very uh, enthusiastic flat earther that she's yes. actually got into flat earth um, some time ago. We've become great friends, and she's actually now helping me directly to be uh, a co uh, event director. And um, she went over to America, and met everyone, met yourself and Mark, and also. Robbie and everyone over there, and she just absolutely loved it. And um, she's got a lot of um, she's got like a lot, lot of energy, a lot of ideas, and mm -hmm. she's actually got um, a spirit that is something to behold, really. And um, it's really fun to work with her. And um, she's also um, um, the speaker liaison because I think that would be something that she'd be really good at. And like I said, there's a few changes happening within the core team uh, leading up to the actual event and there will be obviously new changes coming through. A speaker liaison, that's a very good idea, very good idea. Yeah, I mean I was talking to Robbie today about um, a press liaison as well and that's something that I've got to speak to Diddy about to, um, to see if that would be a role that Robbie would like to do. He, he has um, expressed an interest and that's really good. So we have somebody that's, that's experienced um, looking after that side of it, which I think is also good. Wonderful. Well, thank you for coming on. I truly appreciate it. And we will... It's lovely. Um, and can I just say well done on your tournament show and also okay. seeing all the people on the panel here and also the people that's going to come on. And I'd just like to say hi to everyone. Obviously, Nathan and um, there's a few people here. Obviously, I can see Rob, I can see Mark um, and Martin. And I'd just like to say thanks to you and uh, well done yeah. to everyone. Gary, um, can I just chime in with you for a second? Hi, Gary. Yeah, um, I, 
I had a like, sort of press interview in a week and I gave the conference or the convention a massive shout. Um, they're really interested. I think they're coming along, but I think they're going to put it in there. So that will be handy. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. I mean, yeah. obviously, what I will be doing, Martin, I'll be writing to you and all the other speakers in due course with um, some updates that I want you to be aware of and also get your cool. feedback. And the other yeah, thing is, forward to it. Yeah. Thanks. The, the thing I want to just end on, uh, Patricia, is I wouldn't mind, um, because obviously the things are changing all the time, if maybe um, Diddy and I can come on to a hangout with maybe you and Mark in the near future. That'd be yes. nice, if you don't mind. We would love it. She is like awesome. a, um, a, I don't know what to say, like she reminds me of a very energetic forest nymph. She's a very <laughs> unique personality and her physical presence. Very, very, very cool. Very cool young woman. Yeah, sure. she's she's got uh, what I love about the Diddy. She's got a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of ideas. But she's she's actually got the integrity, and that's the yeah. thing I love. Because, down to earth. Yeah, down to earth. But but she wants to be fair. She wants to be honest, and she wants to do the right thing. And she's just got so much spirit that I just I just love her to bits really. And uh, she's a diamond. Wonderful. All right. Anyway, thanks, thanks for inviting me on. I will go to let other people on, but it's been lovely speaking to you. Thank and, you, uh, Gary. Truly well done, everyone. You. Take right. care, everyone. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Well, we've had Alex Aquarius on, and I've noticed that Alex is drinking a lot of that beer. And before that becomes a problem, we're going to talk with Alex and find out what's going on on your channel because we can't have people on for too long, and I don't want to be, like, sitting here and not talking to you. And um, Anyway, so what is happening on your channel? I know that you've got live hangouts up and going. How's that been going for you? Good, good. Thank you. Can you hear me well? Yes, pretty well. Yeah, no, I'm just, uh, don't worry about the beer. This is my second one, one and a half way. Into okay. It, so well, sure. meanwhile, I'm drinking vodka, so who am I to talk, right? <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I probably didn't either so <laughs> but anyway how's it going on your channel what are you what are you up to on there alex aquarius is the channel by the way thank you for having me on your show i watch it all the time i watch you since about your third show oh wow that's cool <laughs> back in your first i think the first time i emailed you was b before you went to the uk oh yes yes so uh, um so we've met at the meetup i went to your dinner at la grelia thank you very much for dinner no problem. That was fun. So what was your question? I just was wondering what's going on on your channel. You started all of a sudden doing live hangouts, and I was wondering how those are going for you. Oh, they're going well. I have a friend here, uh, my friend Summer School, and her son who goes here near my home and uh, an evacuee from New Orleans. So she knows a lot about, about hurricane, hurricanes and uh girls and things we're facing right now i asked her to come over so that she could talk about she's not a flat earther yet the, the mainstream media is not telling the truth a lot of people can see it through it they're laughing but they don't know what the truth is and they don't know where to find it they might not know the earth is flat yet uh, people are waking up yeah and people come to flat earth through looking at other let's call them conspiracies i know i was looking at the moon <clears throat> I was looking at 9-11. I can back it up all the way to, you know, probably looking at like fluoride or something, something involving health and then yeah. flat earth eventually. So, you know, she's looking at uh, maybe weather manipulation or the way the government handles things like Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. And she can see that they're lying to us. And once someone sees there's a crack and they see that they, meaning powers that should not be, are lying to us, then you can be very well sure that they're going to, if they're, you know, they've got their, you know, head on a swivel and are looking around uh, critically that uh, there's something wrong here. And that'll lead them eventually to flat earth for sure. Yeah, that's correct, Patricia. I think what people are noticing levels of awakeness, you know, we all have our different paths and the ways that we came onto this, whether flat earth was your first conspiracy that you figured out. For me, it was my last. I've been awake fully like since 9-11 I discovered that in 2004 through 2007 mm -hmm. meet somebody like Summer she's got a good heart she'd like to learn a lot of stuff but she can just tell there are a lot of people that are at this beginner level where they just see media and they start to think it's got to be a joke <laughs> yeah well hopefully you'll do a hangout with her soon let me know when you do I'll be in your chat 
she talked to me about it today. She wants to come back and film another one. The first one that I put up, if you noticed people, I put up one for about three or four days and she asked me if I put it up and I said, yes. And she said, take it down. I don't like it. Take it down. Oh <laughs> no. Well, you, you've got to tell her that once you go on a show and that's, that's, stu that stuff sticks forever because it's, um, <laughs> I know it's, I actually have taken down one video with a Croatian girl, Lara, because she said she was getting hassled a lot and she was a young girl under the age of 18. So I agreed to take it down. But it's the only show that I've taken down and kept down. So, it but you was a, your own judgment. It was our a daughter? good choice that you made, Patricia. <laughs> For our daughter. <laughs> For our daughter, yes. Respect somebody's privacy and their will yeah. to not be exposed, especially if they're a truther and they could be imposed by their family or co oh, yes. You got to lay out. It's not easy doing this for many of us because we've got a career at stake, because we've got a family, because we've got um, neighbors. Uh, it's It's not easy. It really is not easy. So I understand completely. Thank you, Alex, for coming on. The channel is Alex Aquarius. Right, Subscribe, and you and I will chat later. Thanks for coming. Okay, on. thank you very much, Patricia. We have Pleasure. two people who have joined, and I think Five Arts Liberalis came before Paul on the Plane and the Hori Sheet. I could be wrong, but that's the way we're going to do it. So, Five Artists, thank you for coming on. And the thumbnail for this particular 200th episode was, was created by him. How are you? Thank you for being here. And for those who aren't familiar with your channel, tell us about uh, who you are and what your channel's about. Well, first off, uh, I want to congratulate you on the 200 episodes. And my channel is basically about the truth in all kinds of ways. And uh, it also uh, fits the flat earth, of course, because uh, we are all searching for the truth. And uh, sometimes I also have uh, videos about uh, healthy eating and vegan, uh, vegan lifestyle and things related to the flat earth on there. So basically the truth. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. And you put together really nice, a couple of really nice thumbnails for me, or people don't know what thumbnails mean. It's the picture when you see videos, the very first one that you see um, before you click the video and the video starts playing. Um, you're talented at that sort of thing. And I, I appreciate you taking the time to do that. I'm very flattered, actually. Thank you. Well, nice people deserve nice things. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much. And the fact that you're vegan, I need to 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 uh, to speak with our other vegans who are here, and also just let everybody know there's been some misconception that anyone I'm associated with is vegan. I would say the percentage of people I'm associated with that's vegan is pretty small, due to the fact that the amount of vegans that there are across the world is really not that big, especially in the United States. In some other countries, like perhaps India, it is a larger percentage. But uh, no, everyone on this panel, I would say it's primarily uh, carnivorous. Yeah, <laughs> <So>. yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, basically, I've been a vegan for 43 years, so that's a long time. You've been a vegan way longer than I am. How did you end up becoming a vegan? Uh, my parents were already vegan, so therefore I was brought up as a vegan uh, kid. And uh, my parents already knew the health benefits of being a vegan and uh, how they mistreated the animals and what they uh, put into the animals to make them bigger and grow them and they make them grow faster and that the uh, animals was, were mistreated to make them as fat as possible and also they uh, inject the antibiotica and other uh, chemicals into the gout to make them bigger and uh, therefore uh, my dad already knew that and uh, my uncle was also uh, working at an uh, factory that made pills for those uh, farm animals to make them bigger so therefore he knew uh, knew that uh, eating meat was not very healthy not the meat that they sell in the most of the supermarkets very interesting and like i said you're lucky to have grown up that way i only yeah. came to it after at the age of i believe 15 i told my mother after i 
found out some things at school from one person who was vegetarian, which was very edgy back then uh, in the late 70s. Yeah. I found out and told my mother, I'm a vegetarian now. And she said, we're not cooking separate meals for you. And I said, that's okay. I just won't eat the meat. But of course, at yeah. that time, I ate the eggs and the dairy. I didn't understand. And then later on in life, became vegan. But you know what? This isn't a show about veganism. Uh, if you want to go vegan, if you want information from myself, please email me at misdeer at gmail.com. Yeah. If you're not interested in veganism, don't worry. It doesn't matter. I love you anyway. I understand everyone's on their own path in their life. Oh, yeah. I don't judge you as in any way at all. Um, it, this is something that we do or don't do depending upon where we are in our, our life, our life path. So yeah. five artists, thank you so much. What country are you from? I know a bunch of people are thinking, where's he from? <laughs> I'm, I'm living in Germany, but I was born in the Netherlands. So what does the name mean, your channel name? Uh, five artists liberals means uh, the five liberal arts. So that is music, philosophy, humanities, mathematics, and literature. I like that idea of a name. Mm -hmm. I love it, in fact. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Well, let's see. My Paul pleasure. on the plane is here and then the Hori Sheet show. And then we'll talk with Dee Marble who just joined. And we've got Karen of Sun and Moon Group. And of course, we still have the whole life, uh, John and Jen, who are Flat Earth Vegans. And Martin and, oh, well, let's not forget Mark Sargent. But I try to, but let's not forget Mark Sargent and Nathan Oakley. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Paul, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Paul on the Plane is the channel. You and I sat together during a couple of presentations at the uh, Flat Earth Conference, and it was just really nice to sit next to someone. And, you know, when we applauded or when we saw something cool, we would mention, oh, wow, to each other. It was like when you're at a movie with a close friend, although we, we didn't never know each other before that, when you're at a movie with a friend and something happens and you're like, oh, my gosh, oh, you know, <laughs> it was kind of like that, but it was all positive. What a great event that was. For sure. It was a, uh, you know, I think I've heard a lot of people say it, you know, when you, when you get there, uh, so many folks that we've interacted with, you know, on social media or whatever. And then it was like a big family reunion. So yeah. it was really cool. I mean, you and I had met before, but it right. was just really, really cool to just sit down and, uh, yeah, enjoy a, uh, you know, a show together. Um, and then there was just a lot of commonality that we had. So for sure, it was just a great positive experience. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for anything. Anytime there's a meetup and you and I first met at the Seattle meetup where I met Dee Marble too, who's here. Uh, anytime there's a meetup or a mixer, whatever people call it, or a conference or a convention, if you have the opportunity to go, you should Go. Even if you think it's dumb or stupid or you've heard people have put out a video that says, oh, they hated it or it's a bad idea, it's a wonderful life-affirming idea. It really is. And, it, uh, you know, I mean, I went to the conference first and foremost, and first of all, you know, to, I don't know if Robbie Davidson is, is listening or not, but uh, I think he was on earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what a great, um, you know, conference he put on, but, and the speakers were great. But first and foremost, it was about, um, you know, uh, connecting and, and uh, with with uh, fellow, you know, flat earthers. That was that was the main reason I went was to be able to, you know, shake a hand and and give a hug to somebody that um, that I've been talking to for a long time um, and, and be able to, you know, sit face to face and, and you know, share a meal and sh just have a conversation. That That's what really drove me to this. It wasn't about seeing somebody up on stage or or whatever that was. It was an opportunity to uh, meet some of these folks face to face and have a conversation with them um, and, you know, talk about, you know, what's next. And that's really what uh, what that was, you know, all about for me. So uh, it was I wouldn't like I said, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I'm I'm stoked for Denver already. Yeah, so am I. And I know when I saw you and same as when I saw Dee Marble, because I'd met you before, same as when I saw Nathan Oakley and Martin Leakey, who I'd met in 2016 at the Oxford meetup. Um, it was like, eh, oh, you guys, you know, but it wasn't exactly that blase, <laughs> but it was really like we'd met, we knew each other, we knew who we were, we knew each other from YouTube, we'd seen each other before in person. And there was that almost shorthand version of, yeah, I know you, I know what you're about. Let's hang out. Let's sit like down. Like old friends. Yeah, yeah we're just pretty old, much. We're old, we're, we're old friends, we're old buddies now. We've, we've been through a lot together and it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, blase is probably the right word. <laughs> um, it, you know, it's really hard to put into words, you know, the fact that we got to just kind of hang out again and 
with uh, with so many folks that you know some I had met before, and it was really weird because you you know you spend a lot of time watching videos or hearing somebody's voice, and then and then when you sit down and and uh, see them face to face, I don't know, it's kind of a, almost like an out of body experience because you're, you're you're sitting there going, wow, this is very much what I thought it would be like, but at the same time, I couldn't prepare. Uh, prepare myself for this so it was just really cool to see a lot of folks face to face and you know able to confirm uh you know some people some people think oh gosh these are just these are all fake people but you know what everybody's very real they're you know there's normal people they, they put their pants on one leg at a time like we all do and uh that was really refreshing just to sit down and and uh you know see some folks that uh that we had you know talked to very often and um you know, just see that they were real people and, and have a conversation. So we can, we can talk until we're blue in the face, but the fact is, you know, this was an opportunity to sit down and, and uh, talk to folks that we, um, that we've been probably been talking to a long time. So it was something that was really, really special. When we see videos that are made by people who are maybe negative about any of us here or any of us at the conference, um, we see those videos and the people I like when I, when I see a video come up, when I scroll through flat earth about somebody that I like, I understand because I've met that person that that video has no merit. So I just say, ah, oh, what a shame that that's being done to that great person that I like and skip yeah. it. And yeah. somehow there's something about that meeting somebody that helps rid you of any, if you had yep. any paranoia or fear about other people, because we're in this movement, or I don't know if you want to call it movement, awakening, whatever you want to name it, where we're looking at truth, people tend to be suspicious and rightfully so. Look at all the lies we've been told from every exactly. angle. But when you meet somebody in person and you're sitting next to them and you see something as simple as a scuff on their shoe, or Carly Sunshine was saying earlier, People eating, just people I've seen on YouTube just sitting at a table eating. It humanizes everybody. And we realize we're just all people trying to do something at, at this point in our life that not that many people are doing. And we're up against so many odds. And it, it helps you have empathy for others and sympathy for their you know mistakes that we all make. I mean, when you make a mistake on YouTube, it lives forever. Trust me. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good thing. So go and meet people. Definitely. I know, I know, uh, I know everyone here who's met others would agree with that. For sure. For sure. The, I found just, you know, in the, what, you know, a couple of weeks since we've been together in Raleigh that, you know, the naysayers are folks that, that weren't even there. And you know what? I, I appreciate their skepticism. Um, cause that's what brings you into, you know, this sort of a, uh, understanding about, you know, the world we live and the nature of the world. And like you said, how we've been lied to. So, you know, you're, you're not going to get where you are without being skeptical. So I can appreciate that, but yeah, I would ask folks to definitely reserve judgment until you sit down and, you know, break bread with the person that you, you know, have an issue with or something like that. Uh, having met a lot of the folks, you know, like yourself and Mark and, you know, um, having, you know, met you a couple of times and, and just, you know, been able to, you know, share some time with and, and have a conversation with, it definitely changes your perspective on, um, on that person. Um, because like you said, it humanizes them. We, yeah. we all, we all, we all, we all eat and sleep and, and, and do all those things. And it, it, like you said, it just humanizes the person. And, um, you know, I don't know, we, we have a, I think we have a discerning spirit, you know, we, we can tell by somebody, um, when we, when we're with them face to face, you know, in the physical realm, uh, it's much different in the digital, in the digital realm. Um, so yeah, I would definitely encourage folks to, if you have an opportunity to meet some of the people that you're skeptical about, like we all say, you know, you gotta, you gotta sit down face to face with them before you can, you know, make your final judgment. You definitely have to reserve that until you have an opportunity to, uh, to, to visit with them face to face. Yeah. Anybody who's done internet dating would probably realize that the people that are presented online aren't made. There's a big difference. You're going to meet. <laughs> so, but in, in the case of all the people that I like who I've met, and I'd say that's 99% of the people that I've, that I've met, I like, uh, they are as presented. They might be taller or shorter than I thought, take up a different amount of space than I thought. But other than that, they're true blue. They're who they are. You're you're a perfect example. D Marble. Some are a little more example. overweight than others, maybe <laughs> as well. And I'm glad you're. Um, you know, I, I was very happy to hear that you weren't judging uh, veganism tonight because as I'm talking to you, I'm smoking a uh, turkey. 
for uh, tomorrow's uh, dinner with the family. So oh, yeah. I appreciate the fact that uh, you will uh, talk to anybody. <laughs> no sure, matter what not, it's not an elitist thing. It's a path I've taken. And I, I would probably encourage people to do it, but yet I'm not going to uh, condemn anybody who doesn't because I used to eat meat too. I love Thanksgiving with my family when I was growing up, when I was young. Yeah, um, my, you know, my dad made turkey. I mean, the whole thing, the whole thing we all, you know, pumpkin pie, if you're an American anyway, all that stuff. Loved it. Loved that. The, <laughs> loved the gathering more actually than the food. That's what it is. It's all about yeah. the people. It's all about, you know, when you lie in your deathbed, you don't sit there and, you know, say, oh, I wish I'd watch more TV or yeah. Yeah. wish I would have watch more youtube videos no it's going to be about <laughs> spending time with your family it's going to be about the experiences with the people you love you know so you definitely want to invest in that whatever that means for you invest in those things for sure wonderful thank you for coming on paul and uh anything coming for up the on your channel that the that something new coming up that you want to you want to plug yeah, I've got a uh, got a video I'm working on with uh, a couple other folks regarding gravity. So I'm just going to leave it there. But uh, got some interesting observations and uh, experiments to share there. So um, it's the uh, topic we all love to talk about and uh, debate about. So hopefully I'll be able to provide an, an additional layer of observation that people can take into account when they're discussing with their folks. So I'll just leave it there. All right. That's Paul on the plane. Paul, I totally appreciate you coming on and I will uh, be watching your videos and commenting. I'm sure. Quite soon. Thanks for the invite. Bye. Congratulations. Congratulations. 200 episodes. Amazing Woo. accomplishment. And I'll drink to that because well, I've got a drink. Um, <laughs> Cheers. I do want to say to flat earth vegans who are here that I do want to touch on Thanksgiving at your house and do a little tiny bit of veganism with you guys. I don't want to offend anyone, but we'll do that. But we've got to meet, uh, we've got Karen from Sun and Moon who has come on and we've got Dee Marble who's come on after Karen, but we do have a hoary sheet show who's joined us. Uh, just before you go oh. any further, I'm going to leave so anybody oh. else can get on because Thank there you. are probably a lot of people who want to get on uh, this great show. You have. <laughs> Thank you so much. And again, uh, Congratulations. Bye, hey, Karen. <laughs> yeah, I'm often on the Sun and Moon yes. group with Karen where I can do my presentation. Other people can do great presentations. And I, always, I love that she war welcomed me very warmly. And uh, just like uh, a new uh, family I uh, was introduced to on the Karen Sun and Moon group. Uh, basically, all flatter family, of course. Yes. But. I like her channel very much, and I like it uh, that uh, I can be on her channel, do my presentation. So that is very, very cool. Uh, thanks, everybody uh, who is watching, and <laughs> thanks for having me. And uh, I will go so if anybody else can get on. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on, and thanks for making the thumbnail for this 200th episode. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Like I said before, thanks. nice people deserve nice things. Thanks. <laughs> Bye-bye. Uh, Five Artes totally... Liberalis. And now the Hori <laughs> Sheep Show. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Patricia. Hello, Mark. Uh, see you later, Artis. Hey, Karen. Martin Leakey, Nathan Oakley. I love you all. Hey, D Marvel. Uh, how do I sound? Do I sound okay? You sound a bit far away from the mic. Does everyone agree with that or is it just me? Oh. Which mic is he gunning oh. for? Because it sounds like the laptop mic. Maybe. But that's okay. I can crank you know it up over here. Maybe. Hold up. I've got a different mic. How does that one sound? Maybe a, Mark says no. Mark says <laughs> no. Nope, nope, nope. Switch, switch the input. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Is this part Sorry of what you that. used to do, Mark, when you used yeah. to help people with tech support? Okay, hit the drop <laughs> down. All right, go to Mark. settings, preferences. Oh, Mark. Then is it, is it really that bad? Uh, no, no, it's not that bad. You, you, you'll be fine. But, it, but fine. It, you're using whatever's on the, the default right now. Wait, well, I'll tell you what, uh, I can just take off the filters. I don't want to get too too crazy with it and everything, but uh, what about this? Is this is this any better? I don't know, but no. it doesn't matter. No, no, no. So, so when you oh. hit the gear thing, go to, you know, it's the second one down, microphone. Choose, what, what, what did you want to choose? What are you using, a headset, blue mic? What I think do you got? he wants oh, to make himself this. sound like oh. Mr. Moot. Do you have that option? <laughs> Oh, man. Shout out to Mr. Really Moody. I'm, I'm really sorry. No, but, uh, no, no, it's okay. okay. It's, we're not joking. We're, it's okay. I just was thinking you could come closer to the mic, but it's totally fine. We're going to forget all about it. All I'm right. not even here. Yeah, no. Okay. Well, <laughs> all right. The whole I will fix all of that. 
it's uh, fine in, in the future but check this out i want to yeah. i want to i want to just kind of introduce myself and uh, i'm going to turn on my cam in a minute but okay so i have a little case to work out got it but uh what i'm here to do with flat earth i want to say you know hey i, I want to say hi to everybody and, and congratulations on your 200th uh, episode patricia um i'm really excited that uh that's you know a thing and that you've been able to overcome so much of the uh the you know hate really because i've been going to bat for you guys um on you know social media a lot uh and you really you know i love what you do and uh you give people like me a voice i don't have a whole lot of subs but what i'm trying to do for flat earth is uh is sort of do the same thing that you're doing same thing that ips is doing and i'm putting my own um flavor on it my own spin on it so one of the things that I've been working on is, of course, trying to gear up for live streaming. And um, the reason I'm sounding funny or something's wrong is because I'm not kind of, I'm not sitting here uh, doing it the normal way. I'm running this through OBS, and the reason is for this. So I have a studio set that I'm in right now. I've just developed this myself. So is this is this coming through okay for everybody? Yeah, we can hear you, but we don't see anything. If you no, I do, I do, I see it. Oh, okay. 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 Well, awesome, well, I do too now. That, that's why your mic's screwed <gasps> up. I, I oh see what you do. Oh my gosh! You see what I'm doing right now? I have this mic. Uh, actually, it's a lapel mic uh, coming through my um, wireless mic, so it's plugged in like straight into the, the microphone jack and the computer. And I don't know. I, I did videos and it sounds fine, so I'll have to do some more tests. But this TV I have in front of me, when I go, this is what I do. Okay, for for flat Earth, I'm a flat smacker. Ori Sheet Show. Is, is is about uh, if you if you've watched me before, I do the flat Earth Digest. I try to follow all the, all the channels and try to. Um, I res I'm, a, I'm a flat Earth researcher, just like everybody. So I take all the research that I do, I compile it into a show in a set very much like this, and I just kind of talk about the new videos, and then bam, I go straight to playing it, kind of like Tosh Point for flat Earth. But I also want to give other people a voice. And this studio set that I have right now, I can take this desk, move it over or that way, actually and uh, invite people as guests to, to be right here in this bigger part of the set. So I want to like bring people on and kind of do what you guys are doing. Just This is my flavor. This is the Hori Shoot Show. But what I've been doing lately is kind of funny. I've been going to a site like younow.com, and I'll go there, and I'll ask to be a guest speaker on one of the – it's just like a site where you can live stream random stuff, and um, people are really doing random things, and it really makes no sense. I mean, you can go there and watch 300 people. Oh. And uh, it's, it's ridiculous, but I, I could go on there and be a guest stream, a uh, guest speaker, and they'll invite me on, and then they get this, and then they're like, well, what are you doing in that? And, and I just start talking about Flat Earth, and it really has been starting to blow people's minds. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to bring Flat Earth to people who just are clueless about it. So I'm trying all these different avenues on the web. I'm really digging into social media, getting on other platforms that are not censored, because they have been shutting channels down left and right. I'm, I'm unable to live stream on my main channel. So, I mean, they're censoring everybody, but thank you for doing what you're doing. And I just wanted to kind of unveil the set here uh, and show everybody kind of my new thing. And I, I'm about to start live streaming very soon, if not on my main channel, on a, uh, you know, Hori Sheet Live channel or something, you'll, you'll find it. But I like the uh, background a lot, and I've seen when you would do the Hori Sheet, sort of the report of what was going on, uh, similar stuff. And I've always wondered that you, you've you got an Asian sort of vibe, an Asian flavor, even in your logo. Can you tell us, I mean, even, you know, what the reason is? Yes, uh, well, um, sorry to disappoint. It really has not too much to do with anything other than the fact that um i like asian people i like their their culture the, the way their architecture looks and i'm fond of them and um uh the hori sheet show is of course a censored version of uh <laughs> like sort of oh my god uh what is this on the show the holy thief show like but uh it's it's just a, a way for me to to be funny i'm a funny guy and you know what i uh normally You'd think I'd, I'd catch a lot of flack for this, uh, and I have been, but only from white people, not the uh, Asian people. Just, <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's it's really funny. Um, everybody likes it, except for the really, like, you know, politically correct people, but it has nothing to do with much. Uh, the hat, the hat is not a Crawley, Alistair Crawley hat. I, you know, people have, like, thrown me under the bus when I had, like, 200 subs because, oh, 
that's an Aleister Crowley logo. This guy's a shill. And I'm like, no, not at all. It's just, uh, it's not even a pyramid thing. I just took a logo that looked uh, like Asian, Japanese, whatever. I said, the hat looks like Vietnam. I mean, people put that together. And I put the sun and the moon in it with a, a line under it, simulating like a plain flat earth with, if you notice, little upturned edges, if you look real hard. But has, that's it. Like, there's no other, like, you know, but people have thrown me under the bus for that logo. Just people kind of will find when they uh, want to find something negative in every single thing you do, every right. single thing you do, anything behind you when you're doing a show, anything in front of you uh, and any word you say. And that's just the nature of the quote unquote beast. It is. You just have yeah. to pretty much ignore it unless you're purposely trying to hurt the world with what you're doing then you'll be outed. But otherwise you'll continue. You'll continue on and continue to have friends and an opportunity to explore the world. And uh, that's why we're here. That's, that's right. And I want to say before uh, you move on to the next person, I'm not here to, uh, does my mic sound better, Mark? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Did it get better? Yeah. I just notched it up. Mark says bit. no, but we're just going to say uh, yes. <laughs> all right. So anyway, I, I want to I help other people that have their own knowledge for the world get it out in a, in a, if they don't know how at all, I want to help with that. Like, so get in touch with me, uh, 40 sheet productions at gmail.com. I'll teach you like OBS. I'll teach you whatever you think you need to know. I'll, I'll, I'll do a video with you. You can use Skype. You can use Google hangout. You can be on my show to talk about what you do. I'm putting it out there, uh, to uh, my, my platform. I hope to be a, a professional type platform for others to get their stuff out. So, Let's work together. I would like to see people networking. Um, like I said, I've been going back to bat for you and Mark about, and, and even Robbie about the the, um, uh, the the flat Earth conference. I mean, so many people are hating on this because oh, it was so professionally done and it was so corporate and that was such a turnoff. Like some people are saying some terrible things, but I'm like, you know how much work really went into that? Like, there's a lot of work that went into that, a lot of time, uh, and um, we need to stop. Um, we need to start, I guess, supporting each other more. And uh, that's what I'm here for. So I'm putting it out there. Thank you so much, Patricia, for having me on. Thank you so much for coming on. I love everything you said. That's Thanks, the Corey, man. Corey Sheet Show. Thanks, now, uh, we've been joined by D Marble, of course, and Karen B has joined us. And Candy Franklin's here somewhere, not sure. But we have uh, Karen uh, P of the Sun and Moon Group family. So, hi, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. How are you? You have such a nice voice. I just have to say. It's British. Everybody sounds nice when they're British. <laughs> Not everybody. Really? Trust me. <laughs> anyway, hello, Mark. Yeah, you do have a very uh, Thank you for inviting me on uh, to your 200th show. So tell me, I'm, what I was going to say is that you have a very mellow sounding voice, just as a pretty sounding voice for a woman, for sure. So what's going on on your channel? And you have a, one channel and now you've got another channel. Tell everyone in case they're confused where they should subscribe and what they should watch and what you've got on your channel. So I don't know everybody on this panel, but obviously, hello, Karen B, Mark, Martin, Nathan, and Hori. I don't really know the other two. And hello, of course, obviously, hello to Patricia. Where do I start? Flat Earth Those Vegans, channels. by the way, is who is the couple that you don't know. They've got that nice couple picture. Yeah, I, actually, we're friends on Facebook, but we yes. haven't talked that much, I don't think, but we are. Um, the Sun and Moon Group played a video which had the BBC in it. I found myself not striked, but not being able to live stream on part two. And then do you want me to explain it, Patricia? Well, you don't need to even explain further. Somebody and something, and then you can't live stream, pretty much, right? <laughs> On yeah. that one. And so I started off again as Sun and Moon Family United. Right. So when is it that the first channel gets the ban lifted, and when does the second channel get the ban lifted? Three months or something? So... So I've got five weeks on the main group and oh, on well, the thing is, is that that's why people who do things where there's controversy involved create backup channels. So look, it'll all work out in the end well because now you've got three channels. So it'll work out well. So 
No worries. Yeah. So what have you been doing with Sun and Moon? I see. I, I spent some time with Mr. Thrive and Survive and a friend of his that he brought to the uh, conference in Raleigh. So you often have Thrive on with you uh, and, and other people, five artists that, who was here before. What's, uh, what's the latest on the Sun and Moon group? Well, search group and have been doing masses of research. When the second channel got down, I changed it to United Family because there's got to be a bit about the people. Um, we had Dojo on last night. I want to include more, just get as many people as possible on and get people talking. Search. Some of it will be about do to move on you know different ways uh you know like we've got tomorrow we've got aaron and the looming project we've got mark Sargent. who <laughs> yeah on friday i'm hoping over the weekend santos bonacci people different everything's just trying to include everybody wonderful i mean that's a good thing and also you are discussing models that are not the ae map and but yet you're still willing to have mark Sargent, who's a big ae guy on therefore you're open to everything you're more about the, the yeah the, the family and group aspect me. yeah because i mean we can't 100 percent know can we right but we're all we all know it's flat all together on that one and um yeah mark's lovely he's was trying to help hori get his he's helped me on my panel yeah growing as friends and as people and that's the best we can do isn't it yeah exactly that is the best we can do and it's honorable too i think and it's really this whole flatter thing has been one of the most wonderful, together. wonderful things that's ever happened to me in my life and i think that all of us here would agree and other people who were on before and might be on later all of us would agree this flat earth awakening process is it's changed all of our lives those who are watching those who have channels those who don't have channels it's it's groundbreaking earth shattering it's it changes who you are on a fundamental level well, you know what it is? We have to support each other. That this do I sound better? I'm sure I do now. You but do actually. The, the, yeah. The thing is, we have to support each other on a level of hey, look. If you like this video that you see right now, uh, share it. Hit the not. Don't just hit the like button. Hit the share button. Share it to your page. Share it to your friend's page. Like whatever. Link a name in it. You know. And and this this is the kind of stuff that's going to beat the censorship right now because it's getting bad if you're not up and up on the censorship. Look at your favorite channels um, getting x nade right now. Um, we really do have to share and support yeah. each other in that way. Yes, um, we had heard that uh, Crow 777's channel on mm -hmm. YouTube got shut down. And I'm not sure of the exact specifics, but what we do know is, is that it wasn't shut down to protect him or society. <laughs> well, I, can, I can tell you, Patricia, it got shut down because it said uh, on his little uh, notice, the email he got from YouTube said exactly, oh, we have uh, received the community guidelines, you know, reports for your video. We've reviewed it. And yes, it goes against our guidelines. And it was the title of it was Lunar Wave over NYC. Right. right. That's and the thing it. Is, is that it there's no reason for any of this, no rhyme, no reason. When we can go on YouTube and see tons of videos, not just around the Flat Earth World campfire, but all these other areas, all these other communities on YouTube that are full on bullying, hatred, vile, abusive. And those videos stay up. Yeah. So the lunar wave goes down. So, you know. Right. Cool. That's how hard it's getting. That's the censorship. That's, how, that's where it's, it's progressing. And that's why... Yeah, just liking a video is not enough anymore. And yeah, I'm really sharing. trying to get that out, you know? Yeah. I share on Twitter and then to two Facebooks that I have, and everyone can do that. You can just share it with a friend, you know? If that's what you can do, just show it to a friend. And that's how we keep all the other channels, all the channels, all of us, keep your friends alive. And um, and talk about each other. Sorry to cut you off, but do talk oh. about each other. I have, like Karen said, you know, thanks to the Hori Sheet Show, like I've, I've mentioned her show several times on my show. And yeah. just even in yeah. casual yeah. mentioning goes far. People will watch and say, oh, let me write that down. Yes. Let me go see that channel. And, I and do it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I mention I, the people you like. Yeah, 
Right. I hear someone talking about a channel. I'm like, oh, who's that? If I don't know. And then I'll go look. And then most of the time, if it's a person I like who's talking about another channel, I'm probably going to like that channel. So yeah, YouTube's a wonderful library, but we don't know where all the books are kept. So if you know where books kept that other people don't know, let others know. And by book, I mean channel. So um, thank you, Karen, for being here. I want to move on to D Marble. And then can I just oh, say, yeah, Patricia, sure, sure. If, I won't stay on too long because oh, okay. obviously you've got loads of people coming on, but you're going to come on Sun and Moon next week? Yes, I promise you I will. Love to. Thanks for the uh, invitation, most definitely. Uh, I can only go cheers with my cup of tea. Cheers with your tea and my... What kind? Yeah. He's the last perfect man. <laughs> Well, if that's the last perfect man, I'm out of luck then. <laughs> Thanks, by the way, for fixing your mic, Hori. It sounded a lot better. It does. You know, you know what it was, Mark? You'll appreciate this, uh, the tech end of it. I was uh, I'm running through OBS right now, right? But the yeah. Google Hangout is checking for my mic, and it was looking for my camera, which is way over there. So all the settings in OBS I was Twittering with didn't mean anything. So I had to go to Google Hangout, and we're like, oh, that's where my right. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're saying. Yep. Well, Nathan, <laughs> by the way, congrats on your skinning achievement. I was watching your podcast the other day, and I get, I get that. Congrats. Well, um, I'm a nerd, man. All right. <laughs> Word. Nerds represent. Uh, Nathan Oakley knows all about OBS, so you know if if you have an OBS question. Ask Nathan Oakley. Okay. Well, I, was, go ahead. Oakley. <laughs> no, uh, go ahead. I just want to introduce D Marble. I don't want to leave people who've come on like totally hanging, and I know I've left Flat Earth Vegans hanging, but Thanksgiving. We're going to talk about that. Definitely. And don't let me forget because I've finished one drink and I have a pretty good memory, but yeah. Uh, anyway, D Marvel is here. Hey, thank you for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me on, Patricia. Hi, how, how's everybody doing today? Well, no, wait, no, like, I don't know. Anyway, so um, yeah, congratulations on your 200th episode. That's awesome. I, I've got a fun game anybody can do, which is find the videos of the conference. A lot of people have uploaded conference videos. Find anything D Marvel is in, and then watch his facial expressions while other people are speaking. They are fun and priceless. No, they're not bad expressions, but you do these like, you do stuff that's like, that's just fun to watch. So just let anybody know if they want oh, to amuse no. themselves, go do it. <laughs> Well, I, I'm, I was trying to connect with everyone as best I could. Um, I, I had my buddy uh, Carlos Pagero with me. Uh, he was actually my roommate, and he was taking really good care of me because, you know, um, whenever someone feels the need to come up and talk to me, I mean, I'm, like, walking through the lobby. Hey, D, you want to take a picture? I'm like, yeah, sure. Give me a hug. Let's do a selfie and all that. So, you know, I'd be standing in the hallway talking to people until I pass out. So every now and then, Carlos had to say, D, we have to go do that thing, you know. But uh, uh, he took really good care of me. But uh, the conference was, uh, that was so much fun. It was. Honestly, um, I, I want to thank Robbie Davidson, if he gets around to seeing this again, for, uh, you know, putting that together. Because I'm pretty sure it took a whole lot more than any critics understand to uh, put together such a uh, first class event. So that was excellent, in my opinion. Yeah, it was. And uh, anybody who has issues with it, who went to it, um, really, all you need to do is just message Robbie and tell him or anyone really who's on the panel what you'd like to pass along to Robbie that you think might be changed for next year. He was on here earlier, and he is definitely open to suggestion for next year's conference. He's not saying, oh, I don't care what you think. He's saying, I do care what you think. So, yeah, I think that's really that's really great because there are a lot of people who put things out and say, like it or lump it. But he's he's definitely not being that way. And it was a lot of fun. And it was just one of those things that makes you feel good to be alive. I was sad the next couple of days when I got home. I mean, I was happy to see my cats and get back into my house, but I was sad because I was used to being around a lot of flat earthers who were like glowing with vitality. And I was, you know, in the grocery store with a bunch of zombies. They weren't aware. They were, you know, just basically lost in the matrix. And it was nice to be around people who were fully plugged in. So, yeah. Did anyone else have that who went to the conference? Absolutely. Did, did anyone else have that? I mean, flat earth vegans, uh, did you have that? Uh, Mark, I mean, Karen B, 
did any of you have any sort of mm-hmm. conference withdrawal syndrome? Yes, oh, for sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Totally. Totally. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Let's go with Flat Earth Vegans. You guys have, and I wanted to talk to Karen V in a moment too, but Flat Earth Vegans, I've kept you here and haven't really engaged with you much. What did you guys feel like when you came home? Well, at least you had each other, so that was something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the coolest thing is having each other is, you know, we get along so good. Mm-hmm. And But when we got home, we it's almost like you want to search out Flat Earthers when you get home because there's none around you know and then we went we went shopping also the next next day and i i wore my conference shirt mm. very proud of it and and we usually don't talk to anybody about flat earth cuz you're not supposed to right mark and <laughs> <laughs> but when we were checking out through the checkout i had to say something and you know i said we just got back from a flat earth conference She's like, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. So. But she, but she was interested. And she said she's gonna look into it. So you know, we planted a seed, and that was cool. Yeah. So that's cool. <laughs> but yeah, we we met so many wonderful people, and we miss you all so much, and can't wait till next year. We have our tickets already. <laughs> well, that's why we're here. That's why we started our channel is because of the conference. Yeah. yeah. Because when I took a picture of Patricia and and Jennifer, and you you hashtag. Uh, hashtag flat earth vegans yeah. it gave me the idea of starting f- flat earth vegans yeah. so that's why we're so, here yeah it's because yeah. of you <laughs> it's because of you well um check out the channel i'm saying this to anybody who's watching who's vegan or vegan curious flat earth vegans and uh you know get some tips and get some little tricks and i do want to uh you know get back and talk with d marble but you guys Tell me uh, very briefly, what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Okay, <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, no, yeah. no last, year we tried to last year we tried to do a thing and I did not like that. I don't at really all. like it either. It's it was okay. gross. It was too dry. Oh. No. So this year I'm making a vegan meatloaf and stuffing and mashed potatoes. So uh, it's a lentil meatloaf. It's very good. You know, mashed potatoes don't really need, I mean, do what you want people, but they don't really need butter or milk in them to be great. You can actually take a potato, cook it, and then mash it up and put salt and pepper in it or use non-butter substitute. Right, the vegan butter. Or olive oil if you wish. Yeah, right. Even if you want to cut calories and you're not vegan, you don't need those other things in there if you want. No. I love potatoes. And I make my own almond milk, so that that's awesome. Oh, okay, okay. I'm going to step in yeah. here just for a second. Look, I, I appreciate the vegan love fest <laughs> happening right now. But come but. on. Come on. It's the 200th show. Let's keep it rolling. All right, all right. Are you my vegan handler? We had to touch on it. We had to touch on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, thank you guys both for hanging out this long and coming yeah, thank in. Thank you for having us. And yes. uh, if you want vegan info, check their channel. And if you don't, check Mark Sargent's channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys, thank you so much thank for coming you. out. John and Jen, thank bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll see you later. Back to D Marble. What are you going to do for Thanksgiving? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I should probably, I'll probably end up putting up a post on Facebook asking anybody if they, you know, have some open space or something. I, you know, I'm kind of mooching off the system right now. I'm off grid. It's all good. I'm chilling. I'll probably just be working on a video or something. I might do a live stream in the morning. I got no idea. Do I don't do plan on these things. I got a four day weekend. Do a live stream. I think stream. so. You know, because a lot of people on think so aren't involved in the Matrix. They're not going to be watching football. They're not going to be into that whole. Mm-hmm. Some people will, but they're not going to be caught up in that. And the day after Thanksgiving, when most of America anyway goes out and does all this crazy holiday shopping at the mall, people involved in Flutter, oh. they're not doing that. They're not doing that at all. So uh, live streaming for Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving in America, I think there's a there's a niche market for that, and you should take advantage of it. I think so. Mm-hmm. I think I may. I think I might. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been meaning to interview a few people. Um, you know, uh, I, I haven't done a shout out video in a while, actually. So I might start oh. doing like a shout out interviews. I uh, want to have a few people on. And, uh, you know, Red Flag Media, that's uh, D. Murphy's son. I'd like to have him on sometime. Uh, Mike Benz uh, out in California, I want to have him on. Uh, I got to get with Drez, my cousin. I'm, I'm, I'm slacking. I'm slacking. I'm sorry. I spent all last week working on a rap video. 
<laughs> yeah, it was a good, really good rap video so, too, and it's on his channel, so check it out. And I really like Red Flag Media too. And to find out it's Dean Murphy's son just makes it even sweeter. So cool. Right, right. And, and he said he he said he liked the song too. Said something about doing a collab with uh, ODD and myself. I'm like, I'm not really a rapper. I just kind of got the song from uh my man greg and uh if you just, rapped you know, once you're a I, rapper I, I, <laughs> sorry oh. you've made you've made the cut <laughs> right cool all right that's awesome you know i've been uh kind of freaking out about that the last couple of days like dude i have a rap video that's that's awesome but you know that's that's pretty cool showed it to my daughter this morning and uh you know, she checked it out. She just had. What'd she say? What'd she say? Has she ever heard you like rap around the house or sing it around the house? No, no, nobody has. That's the thing. You know, I showed it to people who were like, um, who I grew up with, who knew me from, you know, when I was a uh, church boy back in Arkansas, you know, <laughs> you know, and then the next time they see me, I, I got, you know, I got braids and I'm rapping on a flat earth video. They're like, who is this guy? You know? <laughs> Uh, I, I can't. I can't wait for the fifteen year high school high school reunion. I'm, I'm telling you that. You know, all of us probably <laughs> can look that. at what we're doing now and say, "Who is this guy? Or who is this girl? Or who is this woman or man?" Because we're really not the same people that we were before we got involved in this. We are in one level, but in another level, we've become. I think we've become so much more. All of us, not just on the panel. All of us who are watching. Yeah, I think we've gone into a part of ourselves that either was subdued by society uh silenced by society or we never even knew existed and we're in the process of like uncovering this amazing aspect of ourselves. where we're not afraid to do a rap video all of a sudden but remember tiger dan did a rap video out of the blue and you know what happened to him <laughs> hey, yeah he was put on hey. tosh point oh <laughs> I know, right? You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I think I can hang with Tosh in the booth, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's possible. I think. That's okay. That's okay. I, I'll try not to pull a Tiger Dan out here. I, you no. Know, the, I'm my, my question. You know, like I say, you know, like I said in the show we did a while ago. Hey, if if I change my mind, they got to me. Period. Yep. That's uh, what Tiger Dan said in episode stated, number thirteen. So, <laughs> dude, seriously, don't don't jinx yourself don't say by it. saying that. Don't do. I'm 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 just saying. I'm just okay. saying. Everybody's gonna know. Like, yo, did D go hard for flat earth? What happened? Mm -hmm. uh, guys, I'll be like, yeah, it's not flat anymore. <laughs> and, you know, just look for your, the your eye band will be blink, blink, by blink, other blink, bands. Bl blink, blink twice. <laughs> blink thirty three yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> Right, oh, you they've know, got you. stuff like that. <laughs> right. I, I mean, if there's any question, it, it'll be something like that. And I think everybody knows that by now. I'm trying to be as transparent as I can, you know, just showing everybody who I am, what I'm about. When, when You know, it's just about transparency at this point. So uh, not giving too many people uh, enough room to make assumptions about who I am. I'll just, I, I'm telling my own story here. Yes. That's, what, that's what, kind of what my channel is about. Everybody uh, that I've met, called, who they say they are. So, and you are definitely an example of that. Go ahead with the channel name. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh no, it's all good. I am D Marble. I uh, have a flat Earth channel slash Van Life, and I kind of <laughs> mesh the two from together from time to time. I'm currently hanging out at a Starbucks in Lakewood, Washington. I heard <laughs> that laughter. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, there are these girls right next to me having a conversation at this table, just, just hanging out. You, you want to see them? Yeah. No, I'm not gonna put them on the live. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm him, kidding. I'm kidding. Ask him if they've I, ever I, heard I, of flat Earth. Oh yes, please right. do. Please do. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, here, Hori Sheet, dude. I, I was kind of nervous about coming on after you, man. You got the crazy setup in the back like that. I'm like, this guy's got the whole studio set up, and oh I'm, no, I got, no, I, got no. I got, I'm, I'm I got, a, I'm I got, a weirdo, I got, bro. I got, Hey, you know what? I no. envy you for the hey. van life. I'm telling you right now, I want the van life so it's bad. Nice I used to live too. out of my car for a year. I know exactly how it is. It's incredibly freeing. <laughs> so and it's, it's, nice, you, it's nice. It, it, yep. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Uh, it, All yeah, right. it's, it's a Are lot of fun. Point uh, the camera very, at very free. <clears throat> now, yes, the girls. About flat Earth. <laughs> Are you going to flat Earth? All right. All right. Smack somebody? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do you guys really want me to do this right now? Yeah. Uh, all right, hold on, hold on. Let, here, let me, let me put you on mute. Okay. We're on mute now.
<laughs> this is so epic. It is. Five flat smacking at a Starbucks in Washington State with Dee Marble on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, 200th episode. At a Starbucks on the corner of 14th and Pioneer. <laughs> with another Starbucks. That, that is not. No, no, I check with them. They're like, no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Shut. Well, you know, denied. Starbucks, Starbucks has a drink. <laughs> it's called the Flat White. So there you go. They already know about Flat right? Earth. That's awesome. Look, that, that's truth hidden in plain sight. It's there okay. You go. okay. Thank you for I'm coming like, on. But ladies, your the surface of your coffee yeah, is like exactly. flat, just just like all the water. Anyway, never mind. It, we're not getting coffee it. finds its own level, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's so well, awesome. It's all good. <laughs> Thank you, Dima. <laughs> well, it was a great <laughs> laugh for everybody. Anyway, <laughs> no doubt, no Talk doubt. Talk to you later. That's I'll a, be looking. Hey, that's what I'm about. You know. Uh, I hope you do something on Thanksgiving because I'm right. some uh, information and entertainment. So I'll be looking on. Uh, I think. For it. I, I I think I might. I think I might. I'll okay. I'll send out some messages. I'll get with somebody. And right. but yeah, congrats on a 200th episode. I'm gonna go maybe get some coffee and Chill. I don't know, go do something. Right. Find some find somewhere to park, hang out, and relax. You know. All right. All Thank right. You. Take care, everybody, Bye. and stay flat. <laughs> Bye. It's Steve Marvel. Hey Patricia, I know you have a bunch of people probably coming on, and I, I probably got to hop off too because the okay. studio lights are gonna probably you know get too hot. But I wanted to, I wanted to show everybody one thing before I left and right. talk about mentioning other people and spreading the word about what they do. How about the first issue of Flat Revival Magazine by Ty Gorton, and it's fantabulous. That's a mix of fantastic and fabulous. Fantabulous. Check it out. Um, Flat Revival Magazine. He's got a YouTube channel. Uh, the first issue was just printed uh, September. Don't miss out on this. How and, do people uh, get it? I want to get that. How do I buy that? Uh, you know, I, if you could type in Flat Revival Magazine on Google, it'll probably lead you straight to either his Facebook or YouTube or uh, YouTube channel. I mean, it's, it's not hard once you just know the name of it uh, to see where you can buy one or, or subscribe. But uh, I wish I could tell you right now, uh, this was sent to me just um, out of the kindness of his heart. And I said, oh, man, thank you so much because I was really wanting to, to get a copy. And so I'm, I'm going to show it off Might as well. <laughs> right here on episode 200. Thank you so much for having thank me on. You. And uh, thanks, Ty, again, for sending me this. All right. Thank you, Hori. The Hori you thanks, Hori. Hey, hey, see you later, Mark. I'm right. a big Give fan of both of y'all. Um, and uh, Flat Revival Magazine, I'm making a mental note. I need to look that up, and I need to get a copy of that. And just at the very least to show it here so more people get involved. We have a magazine, people. I mean, how much more epic can it get? Flat okay. Revival Magazine. Indeed. At oh, finer yeah. newsstands. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. Near Damn you. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> All right. So we have a couple of people who have joined us. We've got Rand from Flat Out Elected. We'll get to him in a moment. We've got Isa Mahoski. And uh, we have Sleeping Warrior, Anthony Riley. But Karen B. came in before those guys. And so not just ladies first. Not just secretaries first. And we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Karen <laughs> is here. How are you? And thank you for coming on. I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I said secretary because uh, F.E. Core, you're the secretary, and that doesn't mean you get anybody coffee. We need That's to right. clarify. <laughs> what does that role entail with F.E. Core for you? Um, well, I mean, I guess it sort of entails all the stuff that you think it entails. Would you say the name secretary? It's just, um, I just kind of, I'm helping them do the legwork leg for getting the filing finished and, um, I take the minutes for all the meetings that we have. I try to attend all the meetings. Um, that's about it so far. <laughs> that's a lot, actually. Taking minutes isn't easy. I mean, you've got to, I don't know, how do you do it? Do you? I record them. I make it or? easy and I record them. So <laughs> if I need to go back, I can just go watch it. <laughs> I'm thinking of court reporters where they've got, you know, the little thing where they are clicking away. The that, stenographers. Stenographers, exactly. So you're not doing shorthand. You're basically no. just half-assing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally half That's good. No, no, it's fine. You know, at least you're honest. Fuck you got to work smarter, not harder. You know, that's actually very, very, very <laughs> smart, actually. So you're taking the minutes for that, and you're helping them out, and there's lots of things that need to be filed. And you're, did you volunteer, or were you elected for this job? Um, well, somebody else was actually supposed to have that position, but it, they ended up not wanting the position. So then I was asked and I said, sure, because I want to help. How many women are in FE Corps? Cammie Nodell is in FE Corps and yourself. Um, and Cindy Holland. 
oh, okay. um, participates a little bit in it too. Um, that's oh well, and Dee Dee. Oh, Dee Dee, who we yeah mentioned. Right. I think uh, that's about it, though. Yeah. Now, I do want to mention that Cami Nodal and Bob have sent their regrets. They were supposed to join today, but they caught what Paul on the Plane called conference crud. He did a video, Paul on the Plane, before the conference that said, here's a checklist of things you need if you're going to a conference, this one or anyone, or a convention like in the UK. And this is a way to stay healthy and, you know, and, and then what you need to bring water and all these snacks, et cetera. But he did say a lot of people do get sick because everyone's hugging, shaking hands. You're under stress. You're not sleeping enough. You might be drinking alcohol or doing other things. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, Bob and Cami are not doing well. They were supposed to be on today, but I know that the, Bob said they were going to be listening. So hello to them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I shook. Hey, look, I shook a lot of hands, a lot of bodily fluids exchanged. I'm fine. I'm just right. <laughs> but we don't want to talk about any of that now. It is, after all, a family show, Mark. <laughs> wow. Were we at the same conference? <laughs> you know, there was absolutely no that I know of uh, weird things happening. But there were no I'm, hookups. Not that I know of. No. No. Not that I would know, but. Other than that whole candy in this incident, but we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> candy was on before, but she left. Maybe she'll show up a little bit because sometimes there's too many people and it gets <laughs> crowded. So hopefully she'll come back. So anything happening with you, Karen, aside from that, which is a huge thing? Yeah, that's a pretty huge thing. And it's actually kept me pretty busy. Um, I still have some other videos that I keep saying that I'm going to make that, I, that I've been working on, but I just haven't sat down to really take the time to finish. So I still do want to do that. Um, but this whole FE core thing, like I said, I wasn't really expecting to take the secretary role, but I did. So it's, it's sort of taken up a lot of my time, but um, I do still want to continue making videos and I'd like to do possibly more live streams. Um, not sure yet. I vote for another video where you shoot something. <laughs> because that's my favorite video you did when you shot the globe. It was so uh, strong. Powerful. I loved it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that was one. That was a fun one to make. It was definitely fun to make. What kind of gun did you use? Tell everyone who doesn't know, you can go to Karen B's channel. <laughs> oh, yes, please, Karen, do tell us what tell kind us of firearm detail. was used during this global destruction. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, that was uh, an MCX rifle with a rugged suppressor. Was that an actual? That wasn't a class three suppressor, though. That was an actual suppressor, yes. Wait, you have a. How did you. Do I even want to know how you got a class three? We can talk three? about it privately later. Okay, I was about okay. to say that's impressive. No, because it did sound quiet. And I'm impressed because I yeah. was listening. I was going, wait a minute, that isn't a fake. No, it wasn't movie quiet, like where you just hear the choom choom. Yeah, it's a bunch of crap. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. Because the rounds weren't subsonic. Yeah, so, yeah. If you're not but, subsonic, you're not doing shit. Sorry. Right. But, um, but yeah, it was a real suppressor. I wow. just like the idea that, I mean, a lot of people have uh, done globe burnings, which I think is totally cool, or other ways of destroying the globe. But just a woman on her own destroying a globe with a gun, there's something really cool about it. Maybe because I've watched too many spy movies and I always like that imagery. But uh, I thought to myself, darn, why didn't I think of that first? Oh, wait, you don't know how to shoot a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so, Well, it wasn't just the gun. I mean, we did plant some explosives inside don't tell us that <laughs> no, no 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 they're legal no i know what she was I mean, anybody who knows anything i mean you know you're not just going to shoot right like that's not going to go boom it's like that. ruining the fantasy but okay need to add but, the big boom <laughs> but just just for the record you actually had to put impact explosives in the globe and had to shoot it a few times for it to go off it's not like you used a detonator right no huh? we actually it actually went off by shooting it yeah so took a few shots mm -hmm. couldn't do it in the first no. It was no. cool. That's all I know. That was awesome. <laughs> Seriously. Totally. Do it again soon, please. <laughs> That's Karen B. And she's involved with FE Core and um, also has her channel, Karen B. Look for the That's symbol right, of the bird. Cheers. I'm drinking what vodka cran. I saw you in vodka, Patricia, so I had to go get some. Wait, you've got vodka and what? Cranberry? I see something dark. Vodka and cranberry. Yeah, it's yeah, dark. That's, I like that as well. Lemonade and Everclear. Yep. That sounds. Get your jingle on, baby. I do, I got no ice in this. I got no ice in this. Okay. Sorry. 
<laughs> it's November. What, what, I'm sorry, I'm not going to put ice in a lot. I'm not promoting alcohol use or abuse. If you wish to imbibe, please do, but drive careful. I am Everclear. Ask for it by name. Illegal in 10 states. I shouldn't have said drive carefully. I should have said don't drive at all. See? It's Drink responsibly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway. Whatever that right. means. Where are we? Who are we? Um, now, okay, we've got flat out elected Issa, and we've got sleeping warrior Anthony Riley. Now, you know, I've lost track. Who's next? Open your mic and say, I was here before the other people. Me. Say. Anthony. Anthony, okay. I was indeed. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I just thought I'd uh, drop by. Actually, I just thought I'd swing on by and say yeah. uh, well done on 20, uh, 200 shows. But I only popped on really because um, when you were talking about the vegan stuff before, I mean, I've, as you can tell, I'm not really vegan. I enjoy my meat and I always will do. But um, the UK government has just decided its first decision since leaving when it leaves the EU. It's in its wisdom, the conservative government of which I voted for, embarrassingly, has decided that animals that not pets, just animals generally, don't feel pain or have emotions. So it's allowed. To, we're allowed to now kill them, apparently, which I find totally un unbelievable. Um, You've that got dogs. Going... You and your partner have dogs, so therefore you yeah, know. Pet, pets are excluded, but um, animals that are not considered to be pets, so like cattle, sheep. In other words, they're, they're, they're condoning um, violence against animals because there's a, an ongoing issue uh, with violence against animals in captivity. Mm. So like cows in farms, sheep in farms, generally don't get a good, they don't get a good ride out at the best of yeah. times, but they can be abused and they're allowing that to happen. And it was, it was in the independence. I'll drop a link in the chat so you can see it, but it's, it's ridiculous. That well, you know, because you've got dogs that animals yeah, do to. feel pain, I, do have they emotions. Do. You know they, they do. do. Yeah, you can just pinch a dog and he'll, he will respond straight away and he'll instantly respond. And it's like ridiculous to suggest that animals don't feel pain or have emotions. They clearly, utterly and 100 percent do. And I just wanted to let people know about this ridiculousness that I mean, I'm not I'm not a vegan myself, but I get that animals do feel pain. And you have to be an imbecile not to think that they don't feel pain. Well, so there's people that work, not all people who work with animals in uh, in farming and in slaughterhouses and, and all of that stuff um, that have been found on uh, not all of course but found on video cameras kicking we've seen these yep. videos all of us kicking animals punching animals slamming them down on the ground and these yep. are animals that just are in barns they're not going to be slaughtered not that that's right to do it then but just i don't know what's wrong with the people who would do that to other creatures. Those are people who would also do that to other humans. Yeah, and they're the kind of people that we don't need in society, in my opinion. And they're also the kind of people that will now technically get away, get away with this because it's not going to be illegal. Um, there's not enough. There's not enough um, punishment for these people, in my opinion, anyway. Because why would anybody need to pick on a defenseless animal? And it's ridiculous. But it's being outlawed. It's being encouraged by this new rule. Um, that the government are doing. I'll drop the link in chat again so you can just have a look at it and just just read it with disgust that um, we live in a world that is now allowing this to be happening. And I hope this doesn't come in without a massive kickoff, but it's ridiculous that it's even being talked about, let alone actually happening. A lot of people have said that there is scientific proof, not that we trust science all the time, but there's scientific proof that people that abuse animals then go on to become murderers eventually a lot of serial killers found that they started with abusing animals so it's quite true i, and I, 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 have totally cats. I can't imagine hurting them at all um i mean it's ridiculous that even even non-pets i mean i mean go up to a cow and just touch it it will respond to you so to feel to say that it doesn't feel pain is just ridiculous. i held a chicken in my arms and the chicken was vibrating with life it's mm. It's, we know it's alive, the chicken. I'm saying it because I don't know if it's a he or a she. I guess actually chickens are women, roosters are men, but you know what I'm saying. Um, vibrating with life. They are alive like we are. Now, you do what you want. I'm not talking about veganism here, but I'm saying that being allowed to abuse animals because, quote, they don't feel pain, that's just sick, regardless yeah, if you're ridiculous. having a T-bone steak tonight or not. It's ridiculous. Uh, but on a better note, on a more parallel, uh, on a more positive note, um, I've been doing a bit of work on the bikes because um, bikes are off the wall, off the road now. So we're putting tires on them and stuff. 
And I went down to the local bike shop, putting a tire on one of the bikes. And I walked in there, starts chatting to this guy who's doing the tire. And then um, a couple of, bit of rapport, a bit of banter goes along. And I just casually said to him, have you come across Flat Earth yet? And um, he instantly realized what I was talking about. He started, he just literally, he knew all about it. And he was obviously on the Flat Earth side. Um, but not only was he talking about it to me, everyone in the shop was listening to what I was saying. And I wasn't necessarily aware that they were all listening to me. But I realized that it was a, um, it was a hot potato within their, their little firm. And there was a random member of the public like myself next to me getting his bike done at the same time. And I caught a glimpse of his facial expression whilst I'm talking to these guys. And it was literally, he was like looking at me as if to think, what the hell are you talking about? And I caught a glimpse of him and I was like, dude, seriously, have you not come across it yet? And he was like, you're winding me up, right? And I could, I could see this look of total disbelief. And in the end, I had to persuade him that it was really a thing. People were really talking about it. And honestly, you should have seen this. He must have gone out there and thought, what the hell was all that about? But th these guys were well into it. They were all discussing it. So much so that the owner of the actual bike shop came out and he was saying, you're all a bunch of idiots, you, if you think this, that, and the other. And I said, have you got any evidence, though? And he just looked at me and he just said, he just kind of done that handshake thing where he's like, get, get out of it. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, but it was, I mean, people really do know about it. It was brilliant. So uh, that, nice that was a more know. positive comment. So for those who don't know, sometimes in America, when someone says the word bike, it means a, a bicycle that you power yourself by using pedals. Um, you're talking about a whole different animal, correct? Correct. Uh, I know bikes. I've seen the pictures. I just want you to tell everyone what, what do you have in your in your garage? Oh, well, I, I ride a Hayabusa, a 1999, 2000 model Hayabusa. It's the unrestricted model that does 200 mile an hour, obviously. Have it you ever driven it 200 miles an hour? No, I don't think it'll do 200 mile an hour with me on it, but it, it, it goes pretty quick. Like, I have Can been pretty quick. escape gravity is what we all really want to know. <laughs> yeah. You feel the rotation of the earth when you yes. do it, I can tell you. Um, and the missus drives a ZX-6. Uh, for anyone that's not sure, it's a Kawasaki ZX-6R. Um, that does about 170. Um, and I, again, I, I, yeah, you can get there really easily. You can get there like in, in a heartbeat. So it's as, as quick as you're up there, you're back down again, and it's been over and done with. But yeah, these are proper bikes. These are really cool bikes. And um, Zulu One just says, I had a 2001 Boosa Blue and Silver. I think that's the exact same one I've got. I've got the Blue and Silver 2000 model. It's the one with the unrestricted throttle bodies and stuff. So um, the Hayabusa is a lovely bike. So yeah, this is a proper motorbike place, and it was proper bikers in there as well. It wasn't like little chicken chasers. It were proper bikers, and this guy was like, whoa. You're on about flat earth and you should have seen his, his facial expression was fantastic it was just well, we've excellent. all seen it people when they hear about flat earth a lot of them not all of them will start laughing even if there's nothing funny that you've said they'll yeah they've been conditioned to laugh in a really weird way yeah and uh, nothing really you can do about it except drop the seed and walk away and hope well this guy was actually yeah. laughing initially but when he realized that there was like a six-way conversation going on and he was on the outside looking in he realized that this wasn't actually humorous this is mm. you should have seen him it was like the cogs were turning and he didn't realize that this was a serious conversation but i mean it's funny how you can just drop flat earth into a conversation and people like that you would never expect to be involved in flat earth a load of bikers and they were all in they were totally knew about it it was excellent it was just I don't know, it was just a really cool moment. So just just drop it in in a casual conversation. You'd be surprised how many people are well aware about it. It's good. Yeah. Like I was saying when I started the show or a little bit after that my eye doctor sent me something about Mad Mike and a rocket launch. I mean, yeah. I know he knows I'm a flat earther, but I thought that just is something he knew and then we get along socially just fine. But no, he found something and sent it to me because he's kind of probably on the sly looking into it. So mm. yeah. Pretty cool, very cool. And I've met you and uh, your, uh, your, your better half. <laughs> and um, it's nice to talk to people. This is what the conference and, and meeting people at various, I met you at Lemington Spa with Nathan Oakley when he did a meet up there. It's when you've met people already and you're talking to them, it somehow makes it extra nice somehow. Yeah, it just makes it personal, doesn't it? It makes yeah. them real and human. Otherwise they're just somebody behind a keyboard going, yeah. And, you know, that's the thing about keyboard warriors. We've all experienced this within Flat Earth. Sure. Keyboard warriors can say anything. But like you were talking about at the bike shop, when one guy is in there and he doesn't know about Flat Earth and then other people do, he can't be a keyboard warrior. He's there in person. And so he has to realize, wait a minute, these other people are in the know and I'm not in the know. And it, it puts a different level on the game as opposed to a keyboard warrior who could just write you're a moron and dismiss it that way but what was most impressive 
it was totally natural. It was there was no sh- this one guy was shocked, but everybody else it was just a normal conversation to to them because they obviously talk about it within you know like when there's when it's a quiet period and they all argue about it this that and the other. But the shop owner came out and he was like, "What? Well, he, oh, it was just brilliant." And this one guy was just stood there like, and he was like, "What?" It was surreal to him, but it was brilliant. I loved it. So just drop. It's just worth dropping it. Just drop it into conversation randomly and casually, and just see what responses and reactions you get because. I quite I quite enjoy watching them go because <laughs> yeah, the, the penny drops with them straight away or they, they have no idea what you're talking about. And if the penny drops, it's instantly common ground. It's good. Yeah. And you can see the cogs in their mind turning the wheels. And yeah, yeah you can see their facial expression sort of quickly shifting. And um, it's a beautiful thing. So on that note, I'm going to I'm going to step off because uh, it's late here now. It's one thirty six oh, yes. in the morning. And you told me you were starting at 11 o'clock. I lied, but then again, <laughs> well, 1130, I probably, yeah, it, I had a lot of people I had to send links out to, but I'm making an excuse. Mark would attest to that. I'm well, just late. I think that's something that most people who like me have become accustomed to. I'm sorry. Yeah, you are. You definitely are fashionably late, but um, <laughs> Thank you're you. an inspiration, Patricia. Thank you for all your work and uh, keep it up because it's, uh, it's you, de- you are the face of flat earth in my opinion and no, it's brilliant. No. So. Thank you very Thank much you. for your uh, contributions, Bye. and I'll see you soon. Bye bye for now. Later, Riley. Later, Riley. The channel is Sleeping Warriors. See you, Riley. Please Later. subscribe. Okay, so we do have Zulu one here who was mentioned a couple of moments ago. We've got Flat Out Electric Rand, Flat Out Elected Rand, and we've got Issa Mahalski. But we're going to go to Flat Out Elected Rand. Rand Campbell is here. Uh, Rand, you've been uh, on hold, quote unquote, for quite some time, and you're not at home right now, as far as I know. Where are you? That's right. How are you, my love? I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. Uh, yes, yes. I'm in Toronto, Canada, uh, at my daughter's house. I'm here for a number of reasons: business and um, doing some medical checkups and things that I need to do. And are obviously, you okay? Are you okay? Well, I'm a flat earther, so that's a you know that, that that's a loaded gun. Um, Mentally, I think I'm all right. Yeah, I do all right. Uh, physically, I'm good. I just, these are medical checkups that are necessary. Okay. And uh, so I'm here to do some of that and some business. I'm with my daughter, which is wonderful. And um, I, wanted, I wanted to feel winter because I haven't felt the cold in about three years. So I was uh, very interested in feeling that. When I got off the plane, I didn't have a winter coat. So it was uh, extremely bitter. And uh, I didn't get a winter coat until yesterday. Can you imagine, Patricia? Mm. I was walking the streets of Toronto in a dress shirt, and people were walking by me thinking, are you nuts? They have this expression about your blood thinning. I know it's just an old wives' tale. When you move from a cold place uh, like Canada to a more tropical or warmer environment. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think there's something in a way to that. You just get used to it. You get used to the, uh, the warmer temperate weather. And when you're hit with cold, it's... For me, anyway, it's quite the shock. But then I remember I used to I used to deal with this when I was a child. No problem. I'd stay out all day long in the snow. Right. And and yeah. So I'm here in Canada. I I for some reason my I had to buy a new computer when I was in the Dominican the other day. We had some power surges um, come through the res- resort that I I hang at, and um, my computer fried. So coming here, I bought a new computer. And for whatever reason, the the, the camera's not working. Mm. So I apologize. Um, but yeah, with that being said. get uh, Mark Sargent tech support. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. I can't seem to keep saying it's okay. On every device, whether it's Skype or whether it's this or whether it's Facebook, it's all saying uh, webcam not detected. Mm. So I don't know what the issue is. But anyways, uh, I've been watching your convention. Mm. I think Paul on the plane was doing... Um, the convention just you know speaker after speaker after speaker yeah. I, I wanted i want to give you my analysis please do um and and something really hit me in watching all of the speakers and it's something that i love to to encourage anybody in the truth to relate to because the truth means nothing if you don't have this and i didn't see a single speaker including mark um, of which I absolutely loved what he did. I thought it was fabulous. But he, here's what what I, I felt from every single speaker is humility. And if you have this truth and don't have humility, you don't have the same truth. 
this truth must come with humility. And in saying that, I, I just enjoyed listening to everybody because that's what I heard. I heard humility. All of the speakers were on point, but they also had an essence and a tone of humility. And that's how you get this message to the heart because this, this message cannot be received if it's, if it's delivered in arrogance. Yes. And so it was wonderful to hear everybody speak with such humility. Thank you. This uh, this message is bigger than any of us. It's bigger than anyone's ego. It's bigger mm -hmm. than, yeah, it's a, it's the most important thing, speaking on a personal note, that I've ever come across in my life. So Right. It, it's a discovery. Yes. Yeah, nobody here invented Flat Earth. Every, every second, by the way, that I was on stage, I felt like there was a giant hook behind me ready to grab me at just pretty much any time. Oh, you thought you were on a gong show. Yeah, at the Gong Show, absolutely. <laughs> and you were the unknown comic with the paperback. I was the unknown comic. No, Mark, with you, the did, you did fabulous, bro. Like honestly, uh, thank you. You know, I, I don't, I don't boast people, as you know. I, I, I worship God, but you know, I got to be real honest. I, I listened to you a few times. I rewinded a few times and re-listened to you, and I don't do that to too many people. Um, but I seriously enjoyed your humility, brother. It was, uh, it, it was warming. Well, well, thank you. I, it, it's easy when you're standing in front of the lights in front of hundreds of people that just <laughs> want to ask you questions. I no, no, there was no arrogance up there whatsoever. No, no. I was just I hoping don't... that nobody threw me a curveball. Mm. No, you, you were also. Every, I thought everybody did well. You know what I mean? And and um, I, I'm working on right now. I don't know whether I should announce it as a for sure, but I have a retreat, a resort in the Dominican. I'm not going to go into too much detail in respects to that, but we're already organizing and we've been given the go ahead to have the resort. It's a private resort and to have it for a flat earth convention. Um, obviously it, it, it would take people having to make their way to the Dominican. And I don't know if there would be fundraising available to, you know, help those that maybe might not have the financial means. Uh, those things can always be discussed and worked on. But we have the facility, and it um, it's a it's a really nice private compound uh, in the 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 jungle area of Porta Plata. So it's a very <laughs> private gated area. Sounds nothing like French Guyana <laughs> at all. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but count count me in if you do it. Count me in. I'll be there. Me okay. Too. All right. Me too. Okay. Yeah, it'll be fun, and it's uh, it's beautiful, obviously. And I was thinking somewhere around July, August. You can see the yeah, and there's lots to do there because we're right there at Mount Elizabeth, which gives you a really good view of the ocean for any kind of flat earth experiments and as well the beach for flat earth. There could be a lot of live uh, experiments that could be done there in that area. So, Rent, yeah. how long out do you think that you're going to be doing this? Is it going to be something in early 2018 or? What do you mean? The, the have the flat earth convention? Yeah, like you're going to have something there. I would think July, August. Nice. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's cheaper during that time of the year, uh, but it's also really beautiful and less touristy. Mm. So, yeah, and, and the Kastan Bar, where this retreat is, um, is very private, and it's it's um, a lot of American and Canadians have left America to live there. So it's very interesting. There's lots of ears to speak into in respect to Flat Earth, of which is exactly what I've been doing. I've actually uh, taken a few people from the globe recently, six, uh, six people in one day, um, just explaining to them the basics uh, that water does not curve. And uh, if gravity is so strong that it can hold down trillions of tons of ocean, then there's no reason why it shouldn't be able to pull a butterfly to the ground. And yeah. so... and and. <laughs> You were doing water experiments at the bar. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was doing water experiments at the bar, <laughs> uh, showing them with a glass of beer, actually, um, that water always finds its flat surface no matter how you tilt that glass, and everybody's jaw hit the table. And so, yeah, just it's it's fun. People are open down there because people have less, there you go, people have less worldly desires. Uh, they're trying to give up on that whole worldly thing and just live in peace and joy, so you kind of got them against the wall. You mentioned that there's a lot of people from Canada and the U.S. that moved there. Is that because they've decided to opt out of the systems here? Yep. Yep. Hmm. And that's exactly what they've done, and it's beautiful. They get up every day. They sit on the beach. 
they sip on their Presidente beers and, and eat their plantain and, and their uh, enchiladas. And yeah, they, they're, they're loving life. And, and they're out of all of that nasty political correctness that everybody is imprisoned to in the world. And, you know, when it comes down to this imprisonment we call life, I, I'm going to tell you this world is greatly deceived. The Bible, the Bible most certainly did not lie to us in that respect. The deeper you go down that rabbit hole, the more you begin to realize that this world is greatly deceived. And I personally have concluded that this world is absolutely, as Paul said in Scripture, Satan's world. He is the God of this world. And when you get deep down that rabbit hole, you realize that we are absolutely 100% guaranteed living in a satanic ritual. And we're beginning to see that with the exposures of all of these elite and their sexual nasty habits that are coming to light. So whether or not people have that exact same belief as you, they definitely can see the validity in what you're saying. And I certainly do. These yep. are times that weren't the same thing as when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s. Wow, we, right? Yeah, things I mean, have definitely you, changed. And when you wake up in the morning and put your feet to the floor as a flat mm -hmm. earther or even as a truther that is seeking the truth, I'm not saying, ah, how should I put it? I'm not saying people that, that are, are rebellious. I'm talking about people that have an openness to wanting to, to get past the deceptions and live a life <laughs> where they can be free of that deception because you know the this is why i love the dominican and the dominican flag is the only flag in the world that actually has scripture patricia and in the center of that their flag they have john 8 32 which is and the true self set you free now let me ask you this because i look at your pretty little face and think to myself are you free are you feeling a little bit more free than you were when you were caught in the deception of the globe how about when the achilles heel known as 9 11 woke you up you know what I mean? This, this, this truth, this flat earth is the pepper spray of truth. This is, if you want to really smack somebody in the face and get them to wake up and stand up, hit them with some flat earth. Yeah. Today I was buying my computer and I wrote on a piece of paper to the guy across me, the guy that was selling me the computer. I said, here, I want you to look at something. I wrote flat earth on a piece of paper and just slid it over to him. And he looked down and read it and went, oh yeah, I have been looking into that. Oh, nice. I say, good, keep looking because it's true. And so, you know, you can, you can bring this truth to people because you're free. But when you feel encaged or imprisoned, that you can't speak freely about something that is a deception, that you can't bring a truth to somebody. If you're that in prison that you can't bring a truth to somebody, then you don't even know how to love. True love is when you're able to speak the truth to people. And so that's what Flat Earth is. Speaking of love, you have somebody behind you and we've heard her voice. You, could you just say, tell us who she is or her name just because we've heard her, so we want to acknowledge uh, her presence. Yeah, her name is Kendra. This is my daughter. Say hi, Kendra. Hello. Hi, Kendra. <laughs> yeah, she lives here in Toronto. She just spent 14 days in the Dominican with me. So she knows about Flat Earth because she was talking about how you oh, were Oh, she's a Flat Earther. You, you can't be in my life at this level and not be a Flat Earther. I don't allow it. Nice. Yeah, she. When I asked her, when I was going to try to, I was going to try to teach her a flat Earth, and she said, "Stop! I already believe." Nice. Yeah, she believed before I brought it to her. So, you know, and I think that's the case with a lot of people, Patricia. I think that a lot of people are secretly, as you were speaking earlier, I think a lot of people are secretly investigating this truth because that's exactly what it is. It's a truth that needs to be investigated. But a lot of people don't want to, you know, openly conclude because of, of obvious reasons, but, but I think one of the reasons is, is that for some people it's an ongoing research. Me, I figured it out in a few days, but not because I was smarter than anybody else, but just because I was less indoctrinated. Mm. Um, but some people that work like my stepson, it took him from June of, of this year to just recently, he emailed me and goes, oh my God, Ran, oh, you're right, it's flat. And he sent me, Mark, a sergeant videos. And he said, oh, what, have you seen this guy? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he, sent me, he sent me ODD videos. He goes, have you seen this guy? I go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he goes, they're all right. I go, yes, yes, yes. Exciting. But, and I'm not, you're not being taught anything. You're being reminded of what you already know. You know, you know exactly what you're standing on. We all do. Yes. But the indoctrination distracts us from our own truths. And so we get caught up in these deceptions. And when people talk about, um, you know, uh, all of these false flags or these hoaxes, the Bible already described them with a single word. That word is deception. And, 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 and hoaxes and, and, and false flags only work if you're not seeking the truth. If you're seeking the truth, they become deceptions, and you get to, you get to learn the truth and move on. 
But again, I want to come back to the word humility, and I want to be be very clear when I say this, that this message must be delivered in a, in, 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 in a operated mindset of humility, because if you're not humble in this truth, then you don't know this truth. You might have come across some information that fits the truth movement, but you, you're most certainly not delivering truth if you don't deliver it in humility. And that's why I love you, because you are humble, Patricia, and your humility keeps you, keep, keeps you above the trolls. They, they, they think they're pulling you down, but it always keeps you above them because you have great humility. Thank you, Rand. And thank you for coming on. I truly appreciate it. And have a yes. wonderful time in Canada while you're there. And then you'll be, when you get back home, really, really appreciating the warm weather. Thank you for having me. I thank you for the invite. And uh, I thank all truthers for seeking that truth. And I, 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 I applaud in my heart those that are willing to have the courage to not only operate in the truth, but to deliver the truth in humility. Thank you for having me. You guys have a wonderful evening. We'll speak again. I'm going to be here for a minute um in canada so we'll, we'll we'll talk all right it's rand from the channel flat out elected well we've been joined by stephen chess and we also have uh zulu one here mark m-a-r-c and uh we but we've had isa mahalski waiting here for pretty much forever thank you for your patience and thank you for coming on i i appreciate you hanging out with us how are hey, you patricia thanks for the link uh yeah yeah and uh, congratulations uh what's happening everybody on the panel Shout out to everybody in the chat. And uh, yeah, man, come check us out. I mean, we got Flat Earth Court rocking over here. Um, you know, we keep the debate live and ready when I'm on. I also like to talk about the law and the stuff. And I appreciate the uh, invite, Patricia. I love what you do. And uh, I'm so happy that uh, there were so many news reports that were out today. Well done to all the fellow Flat Earthers out there. I think you guys are awesome. I think if we can keep this conversation you know, in the philosophical realm and understand it. I think uh, when we hit the ground, we'll be running like champs. So thank you very much, Patricia. And shout out to everybody out there. Come check my music and everything. We're doing the thing over there in Flat Earth Court. Thank you, Isa. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Peace, guys. Isa Mahalski and Flat Earth Court. He's probably doing a live stream at this very moment. All right. So we've got Stephen Chess, but we definitely have Zulu One. Mark, a fireman. It's always nice to have a fireman in Flat Earth because oftentimes there's fires that need to be put out and you're the man to call. It was so good meeting you in person and getting a real live hug in, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. You were just like so full of, it sounds corny, but so full of love. I, I love yeah. this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. I, I, congratulations on 200 episodes. Amazing. Um, yeah, the conference was something. I was at, 300 pound social butterfly. I was you just were, you everywhere. Were everywhere. And everyone everybody. everybody. I didn't care who you were. I'm coming to talk to you. I want to know who you are, what you're doing here, how you got into this. And just realizing that everybody that I met anyway is real. You know, I'm just sick of people judging from behind a computer. I'm done. You know, and it's, it was awesome. Got yeah. to see Karen and Candy again. Great people. How you got in my shower is still a mystery to me. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. You, I told you, you had me at Lady Boys. That's why I stayed over. <laughs> uh, oh, it's did, terrible. To take no, the vegan edge off things, not that I'm promoting non-vegan things, but you guys did go out for a steak dinner, and that's a long promise that finally came true. Uh, Mark Zulu, can you tell us yes. how that happened? It was a fantastic dinner. He gazed into my eyes. <laughs> no, no, it was really good. I, I needed we, a ladder to climb down. out of his eyes. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I, I went on Yelp. I looked around. I found a restaurant that I felt that, you know, had some good talking points and, you know, I mean, uh, reviews. And we went there. And it was delicious. It was awesome. We had a great time. Yeah, it was great. Um, I do want to say something about veganism, though. I, mm. I will probably die eating meat. Well, well, wait, while so you're sure eating meat, like literally while you're eating. <laughs> I mean, so the day I die, I will eat meat. Yes, yes. But I'm not so sure we're supposed to anymore from what I'm reading and hearing and talking to people, even dental work. I, I didn't even realize that not for me. You know, weird, weird. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, decisions yeah. that we personally make are, are our own, and I would never take away anybody's right to do as they wish. But it's interesting that you, as a 
avid meat eater have come to that conclusion, even if you're not changing your lifestyle. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I won't. I, I, but, that filet I had that night was absolutely outstanding. But what it I makes, forgot what you had, Mark. Uh, I had the Matrix oh, filet as well. Matrix filet. No. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it makes it interesting when people who aren't vegan, who are able to look at, because they, they don't want to be, they, don't, they still want to enjoy the steak, um, they can see the validity of it. There are other people who will never, ever see the validity of it. So, you know, it's interesting. Very interesting. Well, it's funny what brought, brought it to my attention was my son made a comment about, uh, you know, well, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not politically correct. Chinese people eating cats and dogs. Yes, of course. And I said, it's kind of ironic because we eat cows and they're far more intelligent than cats and dogs. Easy because I grew up, I'm a, I'm a Spanish redneck. I grew up in Orange County, New York, in the woods. Friend was uh, on a cow farm, you know, a dairy farm. And they're more intelligent and they definitely have feelings and we don't hesitate to kill them and eat them. Yeah, we just make our decisions depending on our culture of what animals are there to love and what animals are there to kill. So, you know, everyone yeah. Yeah. make your own decisions. Do your own research, as uh, Jaron gotcha. and Mark Sargent and many others always say. So. Yeah, do you, because everyone else is taken. Yes, exactly. And we only can be the best possible version of ourselves. We can never be another person or take over their characteristics or qualities. The only thing you can do yeah. and do well is you. Uh, I want to thank you for the shirts that you brought right. for certain people at the conference. Uh, oh, did you like it? I love it. It had 1963 or 63 on the back, cool. and it was just really a kind gesture that you had these shirts made for certain people. Well, it's just... I, I, You're a good guy. From talking to everyone so long and you know being online together, sure, we never met in person until that week, but... You know, I mean, we know each other. We talk about each other's personal lives with each other. And, you know, it was just, and I hate to say my core group of family members because I like everybody. I loved everybody. I, I really did not, not get along with everybody. You know, I mean, it didn't matter who they were, where they were from. We just all got along. Were there at least me anyway. With anybody that you met in person? Was anybody, was Mark different than you thought or? Anyone else? Or no, it was funny, funny cause the elevator ride up to the floor to, to see Mark. I'm like, huh, I wonder how tall he is. Is he gonna be way taller than me? Is he just a little taller than me? It was the weirdest thing. I don't know why it was in the back of my mind, like you know, like like it was a mandate. It was just ridiculous. Oh, that's and my wife seriously, man, it's uh, not like yeah. you're going to prom. Come on. <laughs> I know, I know. It was so stupid, you know, because like, even my wife busts my balls all the time. She's like, oh, you're so gay. You love Mark. And I'm like, well, I kind of do, you know. We, we get along. And Mark's a good he was guy. The first, He's a good guy. He was the first guy, first human being I spoke to about this stuff. And I I, I just enjoy talking to him. We, we, we think the same way. I, I mean, I have a twisted sense of humor like you guys. I just... I, I don't know. It was just amazing. Well, you Everybody are exactly was amazing. exactly who I thought you'd be. It was my... One of the perfect, cool. like, that's who he is. That's him from just talking to you online and meeting you in person. Cool. So. Uh, the fireman that should have been doing radio pretty much his whole life. Pretty much. Great yeah. voice as well. Yeah. Know. Well, I got to get a hold of Hori because I want to do some green screen. Oh, Big time. Okay. I've been wanting to do that. I have OBS, but I don't know how to do it. He knows how to do it. Other people that know how to do it are no. Drive and Survive and uh, Controversy 7, who unfortunately had a death in the family and didn't show to the conference. Oh, that's right. But he does. Sorry, he that. Yeah, he didn't make it. Screen too, very professional looking and very nice. So, anyway, thank you for coming on and thanks for mm -hmm. the t-shirt. Awesome. Thanks for the friendship. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on two hundred episodes, and I just want to say I enjoyed every moment we got we got to hang out. Yeah, you're you're too. a cool person. We'll do it again very soon. All righty, awesome. Bye. All right, thank you. Bye bye. M A R C. Later, Mark as opposed to M-A-R-C, <laughs> M -A -R -C, known as Zulu One. All right, Stephen Chess has joined us now. Whew, you've been here for a while. You popped off for a while and came back in. And you being a vegan too, you're hearing us talk about eating steaks and such, but you know you know it's part of the way the world is. So you're like, huh, that's how they are. That's how it is. I don't know, it still grosses me out though. It's like I go into a grocery store and the, there's a whole section of cheese and it just like, uh, it, you know it, what, it's the all, smell it smells just cheese. awful. 
is not it's good. Awful. People who even enjoy and eat cheese, and I used to be one of them, when you smell cheese in a grocery store, it does not smell that good. But, you know, meeting you at the conference was a super, super high. I was so happy. I remember even, although when you're on stage and speaking, the light is blinding. You can't, the light that's on the stage, and you can't really see. I was always looking for you for some reason. I don't know why. I'm like, where's Stephen? Where's Stephen Chess? So it was like a, you are a touchstone for me that I would always want to know where you were. So I hope that didn't seem too weird. But yeah, you know me, I'm just like chilling out in the back somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So you enjoyed the conference. Did you have any takeaway emotions from it? Uh, no, I was, you know, it's cool talking to everyone that I've met back there now, you know, Mark and Mark and Karen. Has everybody that you met in person been the same person you thought they were when you just saw them as a torso on YouTube? Um, pretty much, you know, I don't like to say that my judgment is, you know, spot on, but it seems like with the good people it is anyways. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I've made some flawed judgment as well in people, but for the most part, I'm pretty spot on. But thank you for coming on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Well, we're down to Karen B. and Mark Sargent and Stephen Chess as we're getting ready to close our show out. Wow, we've talked quite a long time, and I've only had like a drink and a half. I'm of almost my done. Celebratory I'm beverage. And Stephen, what do you have? You've got some distilled water there. You can do a, like a final cheers. You've usually got some there. We've got our Everclear. We've got our vodka cranberry. <laughs> We've got our vodka and uh, well, Mark is totally organic. sloshed. I'm Are not you? feeling any pain. No, no, I'm actually pretty good. It's just the room just keeps heating up because the door's shut. Is it the room that's heating up or yeah, the... is it you? Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> this panel gets me so hot. Yeah. Well. That, yeah. <laughs> What's that subliminal you always say, hot sex? I don't put any subliminal hot sex messages into anything I say, hot mm. sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I just choked because I hadn't drunk it for a while. That's called a spit take in Hollywood. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> well, the drink is warm because I've been sitting here with it here for quite some time. Um, <laughs> press coverage of FEIC 2017, the, the conference in Raleigh. Yeah, we should mention that real quick. Let's talk about that as we close our show off. Okay. Um, uh, I know Stephen Chess was around and watching the press coverage, as was Karen B, as it was occurring, and, and you and I, Mark. But now we've seen it on YouTube. Now right. I knew what they would do. They'd attempt to make it into a sl human interest slash kooky conspiratards story. We knew that. But we're not wanting the press to bring flat earth forward we're using the press right to maybe get a few people to know that <laughs> a the few thing people. even exists I, I hate to say this but we're a little press spoiled at the moment <laughs> and there was so much media there now i've been asked how did the media get there and my answer was initially that uh brian mullen's wife nicole set up some of the media ahead of time before she and brian decided to not be at the conference. Sure. Um, they're still flat earthers. Nicole is still my Facebook friend. Brian has deleted his Facebook. He's still involved mentally anyway with this, but there became too much pressure, to which I don't know the exact nature, but they decided to back away from this. I understand that. His right. career, I'm not sure exactly what happened. Some kind of troll issue happened, but anyway. So... The press was in part set up by Nicole, and then Robbie D picked up the ball and ran with it with contacting people in the media. But oh. then there was press that got there in a because way that I don't even know how. How did it happen? Be because of social media. Again, nowadays, the rumor, the pre social media has really become the new grapevine. And we saw that with the rocket with Mad Mike. I mean, it was a few stories, and then all of a sudden, they all copied each other. And that's what happened down there. Look at uh, uh, ABC Nightline. They had a guy down there, and all of a sudden, he and he was scoping it out. He was doing recon. The next thing you know, bring in the team. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. And other people flew people in as fast as they could. The BBC, uh, BuzzFeed, NSTV, uh, HBO, of course, there was there for three days which aired last night yes which was fantastic yeah it was only a five minute segment for, for god's sakes 
It was on HBO. And I know we're media spoiled. The fact that we can complain, it's like, yeah, HBO only ran a five minute spot on us. It's like, <laughs> we wouldn't have said this last year. Nobody in Flat Earth is here to be a celebrity, not any individual or any group. We figured that when we have an event, the press is going to come anyway because they're going to come just like they'd come to a UFO conference, which is what right. they thought Flat Earth and the, the conference would be. Right. But instead, they found a group of people that were well-spoken, intelligent, and nice, and having fun, and talking about interesting things. Oh, yes, yeah. there were a few people there that looked kooky, kooky conspiratards. Hey, right. maybe you and I are them. I mean, I... And they're going to focus on people who look a little different than the norm because it makes for a good story. We've all watched mainstream media at one point in our life, and there's always these stories that end the newscast. And there's stories about a cute kitten that was up a tree and the fireman rescued or the dog that wandered for 40 days and 40 nights and came back to its home even if the owners moved to another state. There's all of these sorts of stories that are out there. They like to end with a human interest story. Right. They used Flat Earth as that human interest story. And then they, 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 they capitalized on the kooky element, which we really don't have, by focusing on the few that could be construed as kooky because they may have tattoos or drive a crazy car. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Those are valued members of Flat Earth, as equal as anybody who looks totally normal. Um, right. They do that because it's on a subliminal level. They've been taught by society to laugh when they hear the words flat earth. Absolutely. And they decide to do things like put you crazy UFO sounding spooky music. Hey, underneath Patricia. The, underneath the show. Patricia. Yes. Um, that really is Crow in chat. He just called me on Skype. So can I give him the link to your hangout? Yes, I asked Jason earlier to come on in, and right. uh, Jason said right. he couldn't, but he wanted to. Jason is Crow's partner. So. By, by the way, for, while you're doing that, I Poncho Pete contacted me in Skype, and I sent him the, the link to this. I'd love to have Poncho Pete. Well, no, I wouldn't. But, it, but the fact uh, that he's yeah. offering, you know, it's still nice because, you know. No, no, you send it to him. No, no, no. Well, yeah, it was more of a love-hate thing. Yeah, I know. I, no, as you know, he won worst... Flat Earth Studio during which the award a, show, which was a compliment in a way. We were just uh, not, not, not so much. No, no. <laughs> no. It was. I mean, it was. I hated it so much. I loved it. It yeah. was so wrong. It became right again, and then became wrong, and then came around and was. Uh, right again. It, it did a, not even a three sixty, more like a seven twenty. Well, the yeah. thing about Pancho Pete's channel, he uh, would be broadcasting from his couch for the, <laughs> most of it, his, and then he would his use backdrops. Honestly. I got to say this, the, the first time I ever saw him literally hanging, you know, because he, he hangs from the rafters. Green screen, looks, yeah. Oh, yeah. And actually hung himself in front of a green screen. Oh, my God. Where you've seen how much he he hated people, you know, hated different scientists. I, I laughed so hard. Yeah, he's good. Like, uh, yeah, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Anyway, if you're out there, Poncho, love your work. Hopefully you get your trophy soon. I'm, I'm not sure who's in charge of sending the trophies to various people. Uh, yeah, because there's like at least 15 trophies that yeah. they, they Some had to go to other countries other than the U.S. Yeah, I think they had to be packed. Uh, if you guys are wondering why you haven't gotten your trophy yet, it's because it had to be packed up and sent to Canada. Pretty sure with Robbie. And I think he had to send them from there. Everyone so. will get the trophies that they have. Yeah, you'll get you'll get your trophies. Don't worry about that. So um, if Crow is indeed here, that would be great. But uh, Jason, who is his partner in crime when they do a show together, is a Facebook friend of mine. And I invited him on, but he had family obligations and said he'd love to, but he couldn't. And neither one of them used their face when they when they speak. Um, hey. So hopefully he'll come on. Well, yeah. While we're waiting for Crow, can I mention real quick? Because there's other stories that we're I want to talk about Karen. I mean, excuse me, about Crow when he does come on, or even if he doesn't remind me. Because uh, his channel was taken down, as we mentioned earlier. Uh be before we go, of course, the Mad Mike thing happening on Saturday. Saturday. I'm sure there's going to be media streaming because literally every media organization in the world is already focused on this thing. And that pushed down the other stories that were happening. One, of course, the Flat Earth Conference, which had gotten quite a bit of media attention, and the Kyrie Irving story, which is Kyrie Irving, one of our most high-profile Flat Earth members, is atop the NBA. Boston Celtics are currently number one in the NBA. They've won 16 straight. Kyrie scored 47 the other night, and he is still a flat earther to the point that 
Danny Ainge, the general manager Ainge. of the Boston Celtics, said, you know what? Pfft, whatever he's doing, flat earth, I'm totally on board with that. And you know how owners are. It's like, I don't care what the player is doing. You know, yeah. if if he has to rub the basketball with his head yes. you know, 27 times. Danny Ainge was coming from the perspective of, well, maybe flat earth's like uh, Kyrie's lucky socks or something. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the lightning bolt bat in the natural starring Robert Redford. Yeah, it, whatever. And and owners will do that. But the fact that Danny Ainge tweeted it, oh my, it's gold. Utter gold. You couldn't have asked for anything better. And again, Kyrie traded from the Cleveland Cavaliers where he was a flat earther. Now Boston Celtics, flat earther. He is, no one's going to question him. As long as he, people are so fickle. As long as he keeps winning, fine. Flat Earth, yeah, totally on board. That's free exposure, fantastic, great. The sports world's going to keep running with it. Happy for him. I just put in the side chat, which is the chat that those are who are in the show can see, the link for uh, Karen B to send Crow to join. And maybe she has a link already, but I'm not sure if links eventually expire. I have no idea. So hopefully Crow can join. But while, while we're waiting, can I ask, can I ask Karen a quick question? Um, oh, I think. Oh, oh my God! It's Poncho oh, Pete. It's Poncho Pete. It's Poncho <laughs> Pete. Um, hey, Poncho, hold on a moment. Uh, um, how are you? Congratulations on winning a Flatty Award. Woo! <laughs> uh, I don't get my trophy. I've been asking all week. You'll get it. You'll get it. It's going to be shipped from Canada, and I think UK owns pretty much Canada. So yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we're going to all over it. That's You'll cool. Um, Pancho, are you going to go to the UK convention coming up in late April? Um, I've been told um, it's in Birmingham, uh, providing, because my son now lives with me, uh, mm. providing it's it's on a day I can come when he's either off school or um, I can take can him. He, can he skip school? Uh, I'll probably make him skip school, yeah, just one day. Um, it's Wait. more a case of uh, I don't want to upset anybody around me at the minute because he's only just come back to live with me and uh, i'm glad that he's back living with you I so know. am i it's been a year without About the him story and, yeah, all caused by this flat earth not by you <laughs> but all caused through flat earth and what i'm being told I've, i i think the world's ball well, i don't think i know i, I know it's flat you know I, I don't think that it's flat i know it's flat because well, of water. i'm glad you've got that. your son back it's a beautiful thing and your son is so adorable anyway so well, he's 11 now, and the teachers are having big problems with him. Good. Because, he won't, yeah, he won't accept it, Mark. He won't accept nothing they tell him. You know, it doesn't matter what lesson it is. History, he goes, well, that's his story. And then oh, he boy. starts, it's almost like a, a monologue of me. You know, because the year that he wasn't with me, he sat and watched all my videos from wherever he was living or whoever mm -hmm. he could get internet off. And it was... It was insightful to see him talk like me, you know? Awesome. To know I've, I've had a, a, an impact on him. It's wonderful. I would think, yeah. And yeah. Um, Pete, you and I were supposed to meet last year in the summer, but it never quite worked out. So I'm hoping that in April, late April, that you and your son come to the convention in the UK. In Birmingham. I do get yeah, a chance so. to meet you. It's going to happen. We're going to meet. Yeah, I'll be there, Pete. Yeah, we get to meet at last. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Thank you. That's Pancho Pete. Subscribe to his channel. Thank you for coming on. Okay. Wonderful. And your trophy should be coming soon, and hopefully you'll show it on one of your shows. Oh, I'm going to green screen myself into Hollywood with it and everything. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. We'll look forward to that. Thank you for popping in. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Pancho. Bye. Bye. We are joined by joined by Crow Triple Seven. Uh, we were talking about you earlier in the show and about how your channel has undergone a takedown on YouTube. Um, how are you? And thanks for coming on. I'm good. Can you guys hear me okay? Is my mic working right? Perfectly. Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah, it's a rough crowd over there, man. I popped in with the, you know, when I lost my channel, I went to log in the next day and they logged me in to a knockoff channel. I'm not even kidding you. Two subscribers, one video that was using my Gmail address that I used for everything. So I logged back out and when I logged in, it wouldn't allow me to change anything. So I was, well, first they named it wrong. It was C-R-O-W-777. I couldn't change it. So when I finally got to changing it, it said, you can only do this once. You got to wait, however. So I ended up with Crow. So everywhere I go now, people are like spitting in my eye instead of saying, you know, really, is this you? Prove it or something. 
it's kind of a strange world here. Well, your voice is unmistakable. So unless somebody's really good with a voice changer. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you still, I mean, I'm a new subscriber to your podcast about a month or two. All of this time, I've been, unfortunately, using your free content for my own amusement and not subscribing and getting the next hour. And I felt really bad about it. And I finally subscribed. And I encourage everyone to do so. Well, I thank you for subscribing. But I mean, people should only do that if, if they want to go down that road. And to be honest, a lot of the stuff that we cover, you know, people get to a certain point of kind of dismal outlook. Um, and you've got to be either beyond that or prepared to deal with that when you start listening to the podcast that we're laying down. And you know, we're not we're not being rude or hardcore, but we do lay down some things that can kind of shift a worldview. So there it is. But um, I'm a bit stunned. It looks to me like what Google's done is run an algorithm to kill searches for Crow 777. Um, there's almost no posts on the internet right now that my site was taken down. And I thought there would be more of an uproar if they had the guts to do it. But apparently not only did they have the guts to do it, they either not that many people cared or they're in fact choking the searches. No, people care. Trust me on Facebook. It's a thing. The mm -hmm. last couple days, everyone's been, I've been posting about it. Other people have been posting about it. The comments and posts that I make are, no one's saying, oh, good, let them go. Everyone is just really upset about it and seeing it as part of what's going on in society, number one. And number two, really sad to see your voice silenced, although it's not silenced. No. And um, to be honest with you, if I got the channel back tomorrow, which I really don't think is going to happen, look at look at Richie from Boston. So he tells us he gets locked out, but we could hit that content. It happened to a few people. I can still hit David Weiss content um, that and he's apparently locked out of his channel. But then Richie got reinstated and I saw people posting um, that all his followers made a stink with YouTube. So many people contacted to complain that he got it back. That's what I heard. So I was talking about that as Jason and I recorded the show that we did this morning for tomorrow on 5G and artificial intelligence. We mentioned there's like three separate followers of Richie from Boston saying that they raised such hell with YouTube, they reinstated him. Finally, I got a hold of Richie from Boston during the show and I asked him and he said, hell if I know, uh, this morning I could log in. So the difference here is, is the next morning when they wiped me out, everybody had my content removed from their channel, every video on the web and there, you know, how many thousands of websites must be linked to videos that I had all of them dead. I mean, just completely wiped out. And then when you search Crow 777, you get a list of basically debunk shill videos. So it was quite a quite an astonishing thing. Not only that, they did it. Same day Manson died. So we're talking 1119 here. They did it. And I think they just, you know, they're sending a message, I guess. I don't, you know, they killed me for a lunar wave clip that wasn't even mine, by the way. Um, a guy down in North Carolina shot a wave and asked me to post it for exposure. I said, sure, that's the one that was a bridge too far for YouTube, two years old at least. Um, but I suspect the truth of it, it was, was the zero episode. I suspect that's what put him over the top with me was the podcast that covered zero. What is it that you have coming up next? Um, and are you going to, are you going to be strictly doing it on your podcast? Jason's going to run it on Secrets of Saturn for as long right. as they leave him alone, but they're not touching him. So I don't know if it's a numbers game. I think he's got 6,500 subs at this point. Um, but we're going to run, as always, the free content that used to be on YouTube is on Crow 777, no login necessary. And then the full show is there for people that want to join. Um, but we're not pulling any punches. And if anyone has followed me on Twitter, you know, I've been kicking YouTube in the nuts for two, three days now, and I'm not going to stop. Um, and it's picked up some steam, you know, the modern book burning meme. But what's going on here is a foreshadowing of the future. We're told that Twitter is going to pick up censorship on December 8th, I think is what's being said. But people are beginning to uncover that it's the EU that are putting down the laws and means by which the censorship is rolling out across the internet. And uh, I notice on my Twitter account, uh, the, the time is always European time. Um, so there it is. But so is mine. I, I didn't, I thought that was because I moved to the UK for a few months. So that's everywhere. no, no, that's not what's going on. Most of the servers actually, well, there there's, there's servers everywhere, but a lot of the big company servers are in California. 
Um, Google is there. I haven't actually looked up Twitter to be certain about that. But nonetheless, uh, in my forum, after I'd already been looking in this, a bunch of people were looking and showing that the EU is driving this boat. And it's kind of ironic because there are parts of Europe that still don't expect to have free speech in the same way Americans have always expected to have free speech. So it looks like they're using the Overton window idea where they introduce something that's unacceptable. And of course, people familiar with the Overton window see how that moves to the right till it's just part of our everyday life, never having changed a law, rule or anything else. So that's kind of what's going on here. But people need to stand up against the censorship in a big way, because I, I assure you, um, I've got a technical degree. If people don't stand up against this in about three, maybe four years, they're going to go to their ATM and it's not going to give them money and it's going to say something ridiculous like your license needs to be updated or some nonsense like that's where this all heads. So there it is, man. What can we do? Oh, do we? I mean, I feel we have power as long as we have a voice, but what would you recommend people do? Don't stand for it. Everywhere you go, po post things like modern day book burning. I do not consent. I have a natural born right, not an inalienable right. Screw all that legal beagle crap. You are born with a natural right. As long as you claim it, you can lose your natural rights. I'm watching people all over the web do it right now. But you have a natural right to freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and freedom of thought. And though most people think these are protected in the United States, they're actually not because it just says your government can't infringe on you and everybody knows the government's actually a corporation so truly the government's no different than google or any other corporation doing this the point is do not stand for it make a stink everywhere you go post online i'm not down with this um be loud that's all you can do and the problem here is is if you form groups everybody knows what happens when a group gets formed it gets bombed you know someone comes in and and messes that group up in one way shape or form but you know everywhere you post put the modern day book burning. I'm sick and tired of having my free speech taken. What right do people have to abridge my freedom of expression? Just nonstop. I mean, from now until the day when this ends, that's what people need to be doing. People ask, why does it matter? And the reality is it's really all that matters. Without our freedom, we have nothing. I'll tell you exactly why it matters. Um, for all the people that are listening that are born maybe in the mid nineties who have never known a life without the internet, you're looking at a panel of people, a number of which I can tell by looking at them were alive before the internet and remember the time before. If you want to know where this goes, go, go read the book 1984. Go read the book Animal Farm. Go read the book um, Brave New World. Those were all written by people who hovered around the Tavistock Institute, royal circles, and had connections to the elite power centers. These are blueprints and projections of where this goes. A human being without freedom of speech, freedom of thought, Freedom of expression and freedom of movement is little more than a damn animal. And if you let it come to that, you will be treated like an animal and herded like an animal. And that may seem a bold statement, but I'm never going to apologize because I do remember the time before this. And if this crap that we're seeing now went on in the 70s, people would have been out on the porch with a damn shotgun. And I'm not even kidding you. Just to try to figure out what someone was checking out with their library card in the 70s would have been a fight. So I'm here to tell you guys what these corporations are doing is on its way to turning societies into slaves. And we're not going to stand for that simply. Mm -mm. We'll see. You know, there's a few of us out there. I was kind of shocked um, when they took my channel down. I thought there would be posts all over hell and gone. Just the thousands of sites that I know linked to my videos, even news stories linking to my videos. All those are dead now. And I figured people would react. So one of two things is going on. My black hat friends are correct and they are choking any search for Crow Triple Seven. Or, so. yeah, maybe. Or um, it didn't matter as much as I thought it did. And I'll tell it you another matters. thing. When I logged in finally the next day after everything had been burned down and I got into that weird account and I logged back out and I logged in and it was my name spelled wrong, my birth date was listed in there as September 11, 1988. Oh, wow. <laughs> So you you tell me what's going on here. They they logged me into a knockoff crow channel using my Gmail account and it's listed in there. When I log out and log back in, there's a version you can see my little orange crows over the sun thing that I've typically used. Um, there was a version of that, but not one I'd made. It was different in, in the channel they were logging me into. And I, I don't know whether it's the birth date or the join date, but it literally said September 11, 88 spooky and scary yeah screw all those people 
You want to know something? <laughs> I will never lay down or never be intimidated because I know that it's five rats running everything. And when That's you right. have when you have to hide what you're doing um, and, and lie and do false flags, underhanded false flags and things that you wouldn't even want to talk to your mom about, you're in the wrong. And if you're in the wrong, people like me are going to stand against you and we ain't never going to quit. That's it's, been, it's been really great having you on and it's a perfect way to close the show. And I totally appreciate you being on. Um, and I will always really be a fan of what you do. Fan's the wrong word. Uh, I will stand with what you do. That sounds a whole lot better than fan. Well, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, if you guys want to do anything, post about the modern day book burning. Do not let up about censorship. On, the, on supposedly on December 8th, the European Union rules are going to roll across the United States of America on Twitter is what we're hearing from the Black Hats. Other than that, Crow777Radio.com has taken a hell of a hit because I lost an 80,000 person participant audience. So anyone who wants to link to me, that's a help as well. The free content is there and I'm getting transcripts here pretty quick that will be available to membership. So this stuff can be put in any other language. And I've got an offer from the EU bookmaker to maybe start putting these shows into small books to get them away from the digital realm where they can get destroyed. What we're hearing, what people I know are that are in the know uh, what I'm hearing is that ISPs are the next thing where pressure is going to be brought to bear. They're going to undo the net neutrality laws. They're going to let these people place values on the ISPs we pay for, for private websites. And then they are going to determine what gets spidered and returned in search engines. So we're here, man. We're through the looking glass, brave, brave new world. Sorry for taking up so much of the end of your show here. You haven't. It's been the perfect ending. Thank you so much. All yeah. right. Thanks. You guys have a great night, man. Crow triple yeah. Thanks, man. Wrapping up the uh, 200th episode of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, I'm really pleased that he came on. And Karen, thanks for emailing emailing uh, him. I just told him, call me on Skype if that's really you. And then he called and I was like, whoa, that really is him. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know, Jason was thinking about being on too. Uh, we have a, a very last minute addition, which is Nora, no one's flower, uh, coming to Hi. us from Ireland. Hi, how are you? Oh, I hope I'm not on camera, am I? You are. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a mess. I've got oh, just paintings in the background. It's murky. It's very murky. It's like you're underwater in the green ocean, so you're okay. We can hear you fine. Okay. How you are you? You can hear me, though. Totally I just perfect. wanted to say congratulations on, on the show. And, you know, hi, Stephen. I didn't see you at the conference. Were you there? I was there. It's just I, I like went to bed early because He's, I was jet lagged and stuff. He knows the value oh. of a good night's sleep, which sometimes I don't know. <laughs> oh, I see why. I see why. Well, it was just great to see everybody in real life and you, Karen, too. And um, I think I've just missed um, Crow. Yes. I worship his show. <laughs> okay, I know, so I won't it, say much. I just wanted to say congratulations on your 200. Thank you, Nora. Um, yeah. It's, See you again soon. Um, I'm family you. members prevent me from saying I'll be it. Seeing you at the UK conference for sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you then. Okay. Nora. Okay, bye. Bye. Um, thanks to Karen B. Thanks to Stephen Ches. Thanks to Nathan Oakley. I wanted to have him stay, but you know, I was talking to so many people, I didn't get a chance to. He's been doing these flat Earth debates with people that many of us call trolls or or globalists, so globe Earth believers, or those who just won't let go of the ball. And they're interesting debates if you have enough patience to sit through all the. Well, I don't even want to say what it is, but those who know, know. But check it out, Nathan Oakley's channel. It's giving a voice to people who said they've been voiceless within Flat Earth, the people that believe in the globe. And I think it's fair, fair play for them. They can, they can have a voice, although uh, I don't believe any of the things they're saying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to everybody in the live chat. I truly appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoy the video, the 200th episode. And Mark, we haven't had much chance to even talk at all. Who are you anyway? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> are you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. Are you talking to me? Because yeah. I'm the only one here. So oh. I, I know I'm upset that she didn't actually mention my name. She mentioned everybody else in the panel. Hi, hi, hi. I was neat. I am I invisible? That's no, fine. You're just no, no. You're just like this with me. We're we're like salt and pepper and wow, way to cover. We're yeah, like, smooth. I don't know, coffee Seriously. and soy right. milk. So what are you doing next, by the way? What's after this? 
Uh, I have an interview coming up with the gentleman who I met at uh, the conference, actually. And he was walking around with a PowerPoint presentation. And the presentation was about exploring Antarctica. And he's got a whole thing about it. And he's I know who you're talking about. Yes, Michael Marshalak. I, hope I met him. Met, yes, I met him as well. And he's going to be my guest on Monday here on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Wow. And that's going to be at uh, 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Eastern. So hmm. we'll be talking about exploring Antarctica. He wants cool. to get it together and do it. Not just talk about it and play bad music, but actually put something together and get out there. Cool. All right. That's great. Okay. Well, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Karen. And thanks to everybody who was on and everybody who watched and everybody who might watch in the future. So we continue on with more episodes of this darn show, whether you like it or not. I'm Patricia Steer. This is Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes signing off. Keep it flat. Flat Earth is dead. Long live Flat Earth.